prayed all day down at the crossing off of uh, out. A1, and I'm telling you, it was outstanding. Really? Oh, yeah. They have done a – that's the first time I've been back down there in three years. And Man, what they have done to that place. I mean, it's great. Fast. Now, I'm telling you, fast. Elizabeth ain't fast compared to that down there. Really? I, yeah. I haven't played Crossings in, in quite some time. They've reworked their greens. They've got undulation like you wouldn't believe. It's good to know. Yeah, it's it, it's worth The biggest thing is if you're in the blind at 75% of your shots off the tee. So <clears throat> it's one to get to know before you start playing it for money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> <laughs> Might have a moon pie and an RC cola, but that's about the only thing. Yeah. But it done good. I I went two over today, but I had a lot of luck shots too. Well, that's not bad, two over. No. Of course I kept my own score and I had an eraser on the pencil. <laughs> What can you do? Well, I finally found out I wasn't going to make the 125 money list, so I just have fun from now on. That's all you can do. Yeah. Well, it's the rest of them on. I mean, it's six bales. Yeah, uh, folks, I, I request that health and welfare go first tonight because I've got a, a, a an invited guest who just wants to talk about his business model that relates to our food insecurity study. Well, let's get her going. I think we're still waiting on, is Isaiah on? I'm sitting in place seven for him tonight, Randall. Well, game on, whoever wants to go. Uh, I think Building Grounds has uh, guests too, so. Buildings and Grounds has uh, two guests. Good to know. Well, How are you, Ken? Doing well, Randall. Good to see you. Good, good to have you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Acuff, do you want to go first, as Commissioner Hill has recommended? You're muted, sir. Are you speaking to me? No, I was talking to Dr. Bob. Where'd he go? There he is. Okay, I should be unmuted now. Yes. Thank you, ma'am, for telling me. Okay. I couldn't see all the buttons because I'm on my phone. Uh, Planning Commission went up to uh, the Goodall's property and uh, we're running a little bit behind, but we can go first if folks want us to. Well, building and grounds can go first if you want, but uh, Commissioner Hill is the one that suggested health and welfare. Well, uh, I know that Mike has a, a guest coming on. Uh, Mike, do you have an agenda before you? Actually, I do not, Bob, but I mean, I can pull that up right quick. If you would, I'll let, since you're vice chair, I'll let you run the meeting. That might be a little bit easier. Do you want to push forward till you get to a, a, a comfortable stopping point and um, let buildings and grounds go? Okay, let's let building and, and grounds go first. I'll be home in 10 minutes, probably. All right, so Mr. Bone, um, uh, we're gonna let buildings and grounds go. That meeting typically takes about, if you want to log back in in about half an hour, if you've got something better to do with your time, that would probably be just about right. Okay, about 
yes, sir. And um, I can I can text you if you'd like either way. Yeah, sounds good. I'm sorry for the trouble. No, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, everybody. Good evening and sorry for the delay here getting started, but I will call the Building and Grounds Committee meeting to order April 6th at 7.06, I mean 6.06 .06 p.m., sorry. Um, so the first item would be to look over the agenda and give approval to it if you can. Um, Isaiah has a sick child and uh, around three o'clock gave me notice that he would not be attending tonight. I was out and didn't get to see anything uh, until at least 4 p.m. <laughs> and so I know it's uh, it's it's not a good situation. Thank you all. So right off the bat, I'd like to just say that let's do what we're comfortable doing tonight and let's postpone what we feel more comfortable postponing. But um, with all that being said, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, thank you. So that would be a motion by Commissioner Jenkins and a second by Commissioner McIntyre. Um, let's call the roll and make sure this agenda will get approval from the whole committee. Uh, Ma'am, under this. Mike, you're cutting out, buddy. Um, Am I coming in? I, something's wrong here. Mike, yeah, we you heard you out. call my name and that was it. Oh, under discussion, I would actually request that we push all the new business items forward a month because I really, and I replied to all of the recipients, I just got this at 5.58 p.m. tonight. I think it was sent at 5.53 I've had no time to read it, so I'll be abstaining from any action tonight because, uh, well, I have a day job. Okay, does anybody else want to chime in on that? Madam Chair, uh, Fred yes. Johnson, yes, I'm sir. going to have to abstain myself because I have not received any agenda or any information. And I may add, we need to influence our chairman to get off his dead butt. I mean, we should have had information two days prior to this meeting. We've had a whole month prior to this. So quit waiting the last minute because it's affecting our performance and we've got a lot on our shelves. Okay. Um, anybody else want to um, add anything to our discussion about the agenda tonight? Okay, then I would just like to say that I know we have Ken Gooch here to talk about one of the items uh, under new business, and I'm not sure who else is with us, Ken, that might be under new business. Uh, we have Dan Reese with us. Uh, Dan is an expert on rail trails and uh, outdoor recreation. Thought he might uh, want to chime in on uh, what we've been offered. Okay. So I would like for us to at least uh, listen to the guests that have attended this meeting under the topic of new business, even if this committee votes to uh, take no action on new business tonight, I would ask that we please let them have their time to speak. Absolutely, I agree too. Agree as well. Okay. Then I believe, Madam Gwen, we're ready for a vote on um, approval of the agenda as written, but with the uh, potential to run quickly through new business or take no action on new business. Isaiah Grimstaff. Ginger Holdren. Yes. Randall Jenkins. Yes. Daniel McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. Robert Acuff. Yes. Mike Hill. Yes. Brad Johnson. 
Yes. Is um, Austin James sitting in for Isaiah Grindstaff? I am, and yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. So that was all uh, all in favor, right, Gwen? Yes. Okay, thank you. The um, March meeting minutes were sent out to us today as well. Is there enough people that has had time to read over those to where we could vote on those? Was I they not in a full, a full agenda or the full commission packet as well? Well, they would have been in our last full commission yeah. meeting, the hard copy of them. So they should be uh, available just about all of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then, do I hear uh, a motion to approve the March meeting minutes as presented at full commission and again today? I'll make Jeremy. that motion to approve, Randall. A cuff second. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Motion by Jenkins, second by A cuff. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, Miss Gwen. Austin Chains. Uh, Gwen, is this for the um, minutes for last month? Yes. I abstain. Ginger Holdren. Yes. Randall Jenkins. Yes. Daniel McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yes. That's seven yes and one abstain. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm realizing that um, I skipped over roll call. Um, so I suppose that it's inappropriate timing, but we probably need to do that because we usually use this role for the for the following meeting. So we need to probably get it right right now. So Gwen, do you mind to officially call the roll? Brad Johnson? Yes, yeah, here. Mike Hill? Here. Robert Aco? Here. Thomas Prophet? Here. Daniel McIntyre? Here. Randall Jenkins. Here. Ginger Holdren. Here. Isaiah Grindstaff. Here. It's Austin though, Gwen. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I apologize for the untimeliness of that. All right. So we are at the point on our agenda where we would hear from the public. And I, I do know we've got some guest speakers, but if you all want to wait till new business is up, we'll do that at that time. But is there anybody else that wants to speak under the heading of public comments? Okay, seeing none. Uh, in, in the topic of new business, um, Mayor Whitby, I will ask if there's anything that... I don't know. Just talk to us, I guess, about the proposals that came to us from Shaw and Shanks, keeping in mind that most of the committee members have not had time to look over those documents since they didn't come to us until after 3 p.m. today. Uh, I'll, I understand, and I'll just go briefly. Uh, county attorney's on, and he's looked at both contracts and has approved them. Um, the new business for Shaw and Shanks is um, a renovation of the public restrooms and to bring them to ADA compliance and also to put a restroom, a family style restroom on the first floor and a family style restroom on the second floor, which is a handicapped facility, which will be named a family style restroom. Um, it's a complete, complete renovation. Um, all all the, everything in the restrooms will be brought up to ADA compliance. The countertops will be at the correct level. The soap dispensers will be at the correct level. The toilets that are in there now are too low. They have to be higher. They have to be different toilets. 
Um, so it's just a complete renovation and we will be ADA compliant as far as this building goes with our restrooms. Um, and also just to make the committee aware, we did receive our first official complaint from our building on an ADA issue. Um, we had a lady come into our building last week in the wheelchair. Um, she could not access the restroom and it was um, a pretty terrible situation. Um, there is an official complaint. We are going through the procedures with her now. Most likely there will be litigation filed um, on the county on this. Just to make the committee aware, um, she named everything that was wrong with the building, which I, we already knew. And what the conundrum was is the restroom facilities. And I think it was a blessing that I had already been moving to get those in compliance and was able to talk to her about what we're planning on doing. Um, and we had, we were 30 days into the project um, when she came in last week. So that was kind of helpful to her to see that we were moving to correct some of the issues. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, we do think that that will be litigation on the county though, we're currently dealing with, but that's the contract with Shaw and Shanks. That's the, uh, on the restrooms. That's what that will entail. Mayor Whitby, if I may ask a question. Yep. Um, as I looked over those documents, uh, you know, of course I'm trying to do it quickly, but I, I felt like it was they were a little bit hard to follow because the documents look the same in general, but one of them appeared to be a quote for architectural services only, and the other appears to be a contract for a completion of a job, including materials and labor. Am I right about that? You're correct. Shaw and Shanks on the restroom project is the architectural services only because that will have to go through the bid process and all that. We won't get that to that part until that process is complete. This is the architects have been here looking at the design because we will have to reroute several plumbing issues for the new restroom for the family style restroom. So that will be just for the architect contract. The one with the Shaw and Shanks, the Chancery Court door that has already been bid out and that's the total cost of the project. That is um, already with a construction company. Landmark Construction is going to take that project, and that is the cost of the project. And that project will be completed in June. Okay, so um, can we just tell the committee then that uh, the bathroom ADA compliant project, uh, Sean Shanks is requesting $11,900 just for their services on that one. Right. And then on the other one, it is for the completion of the door to the chancellor's office that has been on our agenda for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, and that Mayor Woodby is telling us has been bid out. A bid has been selected and all some total with architectural services, project management and everything, labor and materials. It's coming to 50 Six thousand something. Oh, Seven thousand. Yes. Yes. About fifty-seven thousand in total for the addition of one exterior door. Yeah. Yeah. And I think originally when we discussed this in commission, I remember us talking about two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. So when that came in at that price, I was kind of stunned, but that's where it came in at. But that is correct. That is correct, Commissioner Holden. That's correct. Okay. Um. Since Mayor Woodby, we are, you know, yeah. it's my opinion that we're probably not going to vote on either one of these things tonight unless somebody wants to make a motion to do that. Um, I personally would like to see a breakdown of that $57,000 project. Um, I, I don't want to just vote on a sum total. I would like to see a breakdown of that. Okay. What, what other comments does this committee have about either the ADA compliance on the bathrooms or the addition of the door into the chancellor's area? Madam Chair, uh, Brad Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we should go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead with the uh, Price on the AE to do the uh, ADA compliance and to get our uh, facilities up to date for the bathroom of the public. Uh, as far as the door, that's kind of shocking. Uh, price 50000 
thousand dollars for a single door. Of course, I know it's into a, a historical uh, structure, and I know that they're having to deal with a lot of question marks as far as the, the uh, foundation when they cut the opening. Uh, but fifty thousand dollars. And my, and just to say that was the lowest bid. Well, we, it may be that we go back to Charles and Shakespeare's. Okay, let's look at the specs again and see what's causing 50000 for a single door. Because the, if that's the case, the overwhelming majority of the price would have to be in labor because you're taken away from the structure and not putting back on. Um, Mayor Woodby, if I may, um, will you again tell us in real specific detail what the 11900 from Sean Shanks is going to cover? Is it going to cover making the first floor have a male, female, and family-style ADA-compliant bathrooms and, and second. the second floor and something in the trustee's office as well? Right. So it's, it's covering about, what would that be, seven bathrooms total? So what we ran into, um, this brought, got brought to my attention um, when I had Sean Shanks. I, we thought the second floor was ADA compliant, and I did have him check that. He did say it may have been ADA compliant 10 to 15 years ago, but nothing's up to standard in any of our restrooms. Um, so when we started looking at everything and taking this project on, we came to the there's not enough square footage in those restrooms to make a handicap accessible restroom. So we decided to run off of other restrooms to make larger family style restrooms to make an ADA compliant handicap restroom. So downstairs, if, if anyone's familiar with the area, right across from the trustee's office, there's a little hallway and there's a restroom in there that the trustee's office has been using for their private restroom. Um, Sean Shanks looked at that and said that was the perfect spot to make that a public, a family style restroom and make it ADA compliant. And of course, there's going to have to be a lot of different piping run and changed around. When I did that, the trustee, it took away their private bathroom. So beside that bathroom is another area that's a small, has been used for a closet and at one time used to be a restroom. So they said they could include and put a toilet and a sink in there and still make them some kind of a private area to use a restroom. So that was how this all got included, just to try to keep the girls private restroom. And in that, when I took when I made them a private restroom, I removed the ice machine. So now I've got to figure out what to do <laughs> because I took the ice machine away. <laughs> but yes, we're you're looking at six to seven restrooms um, and it will being bring our courthouse up to up to date in ADA compliance and they will be beautiful restrooms from what I can tell. Um, so that that's where we're at on that. But there will they do have to run, I don't know if you anybody's in, been in that restroom. There's a huge buller pipe that runs across the top of the ceiling. So there's gonna have to be some stuff done there. They're gonna have to cut through the floor and change out the plumbing to get it correct and run through there. So they've been here for the past two weeks doing architectural designs and they've had the plumbers here they've had all the powers that be here to do this project so that kind of is what where the cost is lying um, with all these restrooms okay thank you for that explanation uh, and then since we are facing some possible litigation and since commissioner johnson has already made the comment he has i think i would like to open the floor in case anybody wants to make a motion to approve the contract for architectural services on those bathrooms. And Commissioner Holder, just to let the committee know also, the lady that we're dealing with on this complaint, I do have to, we do have to respond back. Um, I do have to respond back to her with a written response and it will need to, I, I will like to include a time frame on since we have this project in completion and that will help us if she does some form of litigation. Sure Mayor, is that, has our county attorney been in the loop on oh, this? Yeah. He's on top. He's been on the loop on everybody. <laughs> oh, good jumping, jumping. I think uh, Josh is planning on talking about the ADA situation. Um, it has kind of been put to the back burner from what we can tell, and we do have to pick back up on that. I have also, 
I'm, I'm replacing the water fountains in the building and those will be brought up to compliance because right now they're not in compliance because you cannot get a wheelchair to clear the space underneath there. They can't get under there with their wheelchair to get a drink of water, even though we're really not using the water fountains right now. So what I've done is ordered what the school system has. They have the bottle, the refillable bottle containers that so they can refill their bottles or a water fountain. So those will be installed and they will be ADA compliant also when they're installed. So that takes one of the other, that fixes the restrooms and our water fountains. That's one of the two of the things that's on the list, but the list is huge. <laughs> okay, but everybody better keep in mind too, just because that it does not meet ADA right now, that's what the survey was done for. And it was not mandatory by the federal government that we do them all at one time that they were supposed to be in a plan submitted by the EMA to the federal government as to the scheduling of bring them in compliance as soon as possible. Okay, so that don't mean that we have to go through the whole list uh, and we can, and that also lends to the opportunity as we do uh, our update and improvement on our capital uh, building uh, that that's going to eliminate a lot of, of yeah. the ADA. The uh, plan, Commissioner Johnson, the plan dates it says over 35 years, but the past two years we've done nothing. And Johnson, Miss Whitby, Ms. Whitby uh, I would caution us on going into too much detail uh, on the specifics that there's been an ADA complaint filed. We're in the process of responding. Um, the, the plan that the county undertook a, a year or more ago is in process uh, and we've identified uh, a lot of deficiencies that are in the process of being addressed. So I, I would drop the specific discussion about that at this point. Thank you, Attorney Harden. So again, I'll say the floor is open if anybody would like to make a motion on the bathroom uh, architectural contract for $11,900. Chairwoman Holdren. Yes, sir. I'll make a motion that we move forward with this. A second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner McIntyre for a second by Commissioner Jaynes. Uh, the floor is open for discussion if there is any. Okay, Ms. Gwynn, if you'll call the roll on... Uh, Approval of the contract for the ADA compliant bathrooms, architectural services only. Uh, Austin Madam James. Chairman. Yes. Ginger Holdren. Yes. Randall Jenkins. Yes. Daniel McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. yes. Robert Acuff. Yes. Mike Hill. Abstain. Not enough information provided in a timely manner. Brad Johnson. Yes. Okay. Um, the motion passes seven yeses, one abstention. So uh, under the heading of new business, I'd like to go to item C so that we can get to our guest. Um, this um, is a conversation uh, about the old Tweetsie Railroad route uh, in the Valley Forge Hampton area. It's about a potential land donation. And I know that this is something that has been on Ken Gouge's mind for at least three years, I guess longer than that. He and I first talked about it three years ago. So, um, Ken, if it's okay with you, I'd like to just turn the floor over to you, and you can call on, um, I can't see him anymore, the other person, um, uh, as yeah, needed. Uh, Dan, Dan Reese just sent me a message that uh, he was going to have to leave at 630. Okay, so, I'm sorry. So, uh, unfortunately, we'll have to do without him. Okay, I'm so sorry. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. Madam Chairwoman, before we get started, that one thing we need to correct on your previous motion and vote, uh, it needs to be noted that those are uh, come from our capital improvement fund. That's going to be the funding device for your AE contract. Capital improvement. Okay. Um, I mean, does that, that's not something that has to be voted on right now, is it? 
if you spend the money, you're going to have to. I mean, it should be included in the motion <clears throat> of where your funding is going to be coming from, because that'll go to the budget committee. Chairman or Commissioner Johnson and, and, and Chairman James is on here. I think we appropriated money to the architect's line already for some of these projects. That's correct. We moved some last month. I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe fifty thousand dollars or something. So we'll that'll come out of the architect line item. Yeah. We had already appropriated the money because we knew some of these projects were coming up for the architect. And it's actually Yeah, I don't I don't think even you know I've tracked Brad, but I don't even think um uh, once it gets approved at full commission, it don't have to come back budget because there's money in the right. line item. So, who's the line item under? Is that under you, Mayor? Yeah, it's in the building okay. grounds under the architect. Okay, good enough. So it's 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 already approved and the money's there to take care of the contract. Yeah, I don't even know if you, uh, Brad, um, correct me, but I don't even know if she needs to get uh, commission approval on it. I guess she's got to get commission. Well, I don't know if she does or not since she's got the power to sign the contract. If she's got money in her line item. I, I agree with you because they, you put a you put a pot in there in for DAE and that's in her budget in itself and she can write anything in her budget guidelines uh, and you don't have to bid it out because it is for professional services so we should be good to go then. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Now back to Ken Gooch. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, Abby, I think you were going to make, uh, am, am I ready to pull up my PowerPoint? You should be good to share, Ken. Thank you very much. Okay, can, uh, can everybody see my slide? No. 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 Let's see here. What happened, Abby? It's telling me you've got permission to share. Okay, so all I have to do is, should have to just start it, right? Can anybody see the, the slide? No. Did you hit the share screen button on your Zoom screen? Oh, uh, let's see here. Bum, 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 bum. Along the toolbar on the bottom, there should be a button that says share screen. It should be green. Yes, got it. Okay there. Now do you see it? Yes, yeah. sir. We got it now. All right. Very good. Okay. The county has been offered a piece of property, which is essentially the Tweetsie Railroad's right-of-way between Valley Forge and Hampton, including the tunnel across the Horseshoe Bend in the Doe River. Um, this is a windfall. Um, when we uh, discussed this at the last Parks and Board uh, meeting, uh, uh, Patty asked me to show you about this. And uh, so I'm gonna go through this real quickly. If there are any questions, uh, just, uh, just go ahead and interrupt me and we'll go from there. Uh, the donated property is essentially the, the Tweetsie right of way from Valley Forge to Hampton. It starts at the end of Mill Pond Road uh, in Valley Forge and it goes to Railroad Street in Hampton. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous stretch of the river. Uh, Patty, you were there, you agree? I agree. It's about a mile and a quarter long. There are pretty good roads on both ends. The tunnel, which I thought was not in very good shape, turns out to be in excellent condition. There's even a pathway all the way through it. From the Hampton end, it's less than a mile to our pocket park, Greenbridge Landing. And from the Valley Forge end, it's about two miles to the Tweetsie Trail trailhead on State Line Road in Elizabethan. Now this is uh, from the official state map showing you the, uh, the property that's been offered to us. It starts at uh, Mill Pond Road, where that dead ends, there is a dirt road that goes to the Doe River. Uh, the old Tweetsie Railroad piers are still there. There is an old 
highway bridge there and it, that goes across and into the tunnel. Then a nice little walk down uh, on the Hampton side to Railroad Street. Uh, and that is what uh, the, uh, they have offered to donate to us. Now, I'm gonna apologize right now for uh, some of the appearance of this. Uh, it, it's pretty amateurish, but then I'm an amateur. Uh, if we carry this to the next step, I'm going to get somebody involved who knows what they're doing. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. This picture doesn't even begin to do it justice how pretty this walk is along the river and through the tunnel and coming out on the Hampton side. It's just, it's just, just a gorgeous walk. Uh, this is on the Hampton side. You can see what, what good shape the trail is on the Hampton side. Uh, and this is the old rail bed of the Tweetsie Railroad. That's my son. He's standing in the uh, mouth of the tunnel. As I said, it's in excellent condition. And we don't have to do anything except put up a sign and say, welcome to the tunnel. On the Hampton side, there's even a nice little uh, waterfall, very pretty. And my son spotted this, he's a rock climber. So he scrambled up, took this picture. Uh, the picture doesn't do us justice. This is a big rock formation. He wants to bring some of his friends back and see if it would make a, a good rock climbing spot. And when you come out of the trees on the Hampton side, this is what you see. It's absolutely gorgeous on this whole walk. But I, this picture, I, I just said, oh my gosh, this is just so beautiful. Uh, this is as pretty, I think, as it's much shorter, but it's just as pretty as the Virginia Creeper Trail or the New River Trail up in Virginia. Now, there are some issues that we're going to have to deal with. We need a community sponsor. Uh, all of our parks have to have a local sponsor to take care of it. Uh, Randall's working on it. Randall, have you had any bites yet? Uh, I've got a few lines out, but uh, some nibbles. Nothing, okay. nothing, nothing for sure yet. Okay. Well, we don't, we don't anticipate having too much difficulty getting a sponsor for this park uh, in the uh, Valley Forge community. When that's taken care of, uh, though, we'll be ready to go. No offense to the good people of Valley Forge, but the neighborhood is pretty run down. Uh, this house sits at the very beginning of the trail, and it doesn't look like it's been occupied in 20 years plus. Um, so that's an issue that we will probably need to deal with. There's no parking that I'm aware of. I don't know if there's any nearby county land, county owned land. I don't think so. We may be able to deal with it through a property donation or uh, a purchase. If we can find somebody to sell us property at a, at a discounted price, but that is an issue. The road on the Valley Forge side is not in nearly as good a shape as the road on the Hampton side, but it's just gonna take minor repairs and upgrades to get it into really good shape. And I'm hoping that we can uh, convince the, uh, the highway department to help us out with that. Uh, the tunnel access on the Valley Forge side, there's a steep climb up to it. I don't see it as much of a problem. We need to install some steps or recontour the land so it's an easy walk up but that's a minor issue. The Elizabethan water line from Hampton down to the city runs through the tunnel and along all of this, uh, all of this path. Now we'll have to coordinate with them, but I don't think that this will really be an issue because it's all buried underground. And there's some drainage and wet areas. Again, the highway department, I think can handle this very quickly. We need to uh, upgrade some drains, install some other drains. Shouldn't be a real problem. Now, as we walked it, we noticed that there's very little, if any, litter. The people, there are people on this trail all the time already, but they're taking good care of it. But there are at least three culverts that come off of the highway, which is directly above it. And at each of those culvert outlets, uh, we've got lots of trash. Um, we will have to put in trash traps of some sort, and I'd really like to see the county start enforcing its littering laws, uh, cut down on the amount of stuff that's coming off of the highway. Now, the real issue, though, is the access uh, across the river. 
Uh, I'm standing at the tunnel entrance here, looking down on the highway bridge, and the bridge is in really bad condition. Uh, it's hard to see from this uh, point, but concrete is literally falling off the bridge. Now, by contrast, uh, over in the uh, lower right of the picture, you'll see uh, one of the uh, Tweetsie Railroad uh, bridge piers. And I'm told from people who are more familiar with the situation than I am that those piers look like they're as good as the day they were built. Uh, perhaps we can use them to put a, a, a bridge across. I don't know. But uh, this is going to be the issue that we have to deal with. Um, the picture on the left here uh, in the, uh, the rectangles, you're actually looking through the bridge piers. The concrete has crumbled away. The steel is exposed. That's how bad it is. And the picture on the right, well, that's one of the two holes in the bridge uh, surface. Um, now this, we walked across this bridge. People are using it all the time in any case, uh, but it's gonna be an issue uh, any way we go about it. Um, I think we might be able to figure out a way to use it, but convincing the powers that be, including you folks, that we can do it and do it safely is another matter altogether. Mr. Gooch? Yes. If you'll remember, as, as you probably do recall, because the Tweet Sea Trail has been your baby, Ty Singer Hampton and Associates did the engineering on the entire length of the thing, including what we've called the Carter County Extension. And I believe this bridge was called for to have prefab panels installed on the existing abutments and footings. Um, in, in the original plan, it was it was detailed out like a highway uh, a highway project in sections. I think this is probably section five. Roan Mountain was section seven, but I, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. H Mr. Tysinger, um, uh, or they had they had planned on using just like you're suggesting the the bridge supports there. Yeah, Mike, I I have heard of that study. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, as I said, I think we can safely use the bridge, but uh, it's it's an issue. Uh, I can tell you one thing about that bridge, and that is that it's going to fall down one of these days. Um, I can't tell you if it's going to happen tonight or if it's going to be 50 years or 100 years from now, but it's going to come down. And when it comes down, if anybody's on it, it's going to be a really bad day. So if we're going to use it, we have to be sure that it can be used safely. Um, and I cannot take it for granted that we're gonna be able to work that out. Uh, this is the issue that we have to deal with. And I sure hope you're right about it. I've got that information somewhere. I've been purging documents lately. I'm gonna make a concerted effort to look at that for you or look for that and, and I'll get it to you. Um, I'm pretty sure there's one somewhere in the, in the archives at the planning office as well, because I got my copy from Schutler. Mike, if you can find that, I'd really appreciate it if you could forward it to me. It's time. We, we're going to need it. Well, the summary is that it's going to be easy to create a pocket park, a pocket linear park for the Valley Forge community. All we need is a community sponsor and put up a sign, basically. Some drainage issues to take care of, improve the road surface a little bit, and we're ready to go. We have some other minor issues. I don't think we're going to have any problems. If we can figure out a way to get across the river, we've got a walking and biking trail that goes all the way from Valley Forge to Hampton. But that pedestrian walkway, it's the most difficult issue, but it's not insurmountable. But what we would really like to do is to expand the Tweetsie Trail. Right now, uh, the trail ends in Elizabethan, at the Elizabethan Trailhead on State Line Road. What we would like to do is take it up State Line Road to US 19E, then to uh, Mill Pond Road in Valley Forge. That's where this uh, property begins. Walk down the river to the bridge, go through the tunnel, walk on the other side to Railroad Street. That ends at Rittertown Road, cross the bridge there back onto 19E and walk down or drive, ride down the uh, the uh, uh, highway to Greenbridge Landing Park, which is directly across 19E from the high school. Now, if we did that, it would increase the trail's length by almost 
It's 9.7 miles now from the Johnson City Trailhead to the Elizabethan Trailhead. We would be adding about four and a half miles. There's also an extension at the, uh, the Johnson City end down to ETSU. That's along the city streets though, so I don't really count that. The trail will be about 14 miles long. Now there's some pretty sections on the existing Tweetsie Trail, particularly in Happy Valley, but this would be the most scenic section by far. It simply does not compare to what already exists. It's so much better. It incorporates a historic tunnel. And I know that the East Tennessee and Western North Carolina Railroad Historic Association, say that fast five times, I know that they would love to put up some uh, uh, markers to explain the history of the trail and the history of the bridge and showing pictures of it and the like, just like they did up at Greenbridge Landing Park with, the, uh, uh, with a historic panel on the old Green Bridge. And as they've done on the existing Tweetsie Trail at uh, quite a few locations between Johnson City and Elizabethan. This also gives access to the watershed trails in Hampton. Uh, now, this is the, uh, the mountain bikers trails. As you can see where, where the uh, uh, trail ends right now on Railroad Street, all you have to do is cross the, uh, the bridge at Rittertown Road and then across 19E and it takes you right up to the entrance to the trails. Why that is important is that whereas the trails now have about three and a half miles very soon, that's going to expand over 10 miles of trails. Uh, this plan that you're looking at, uh, the Carter County Parks and Rec Board actually paid for this master plan. We're working with the City of Elizabethan and the Southern Off-Road Bicycle Association to expand these trails. Uh, Sorba is looking for grant money right now, and uh, we have pledged $10,000 uh, as a part of a match for that, and the City of Elizabethan has also pledged money. At 10 miles, the watershed trails become a real destination for, for mountain bikers. They're all crazy, but hey, what can I say? This trail system will have a vertical drop of over a thousand feet, and it will have some fantastic trails on it. So now you've got a way to get from Elizabethan all the way up to Hampton on your mountain bike to go ride the, the mountain bike trails and a way to get back. And the trail would end at our existing pocket park, Greenbridge Landing on the Doe River across from the Hampton High School. Uh, this is the picture I took here. This is a typical day at Greenbridge Landing. This is nothing unusual. At 14 miles long, the nature of the Tweetsie Trail changes. It goes from being a trail that is for the local people to use and enjoy to being something that is a viable tourist attraction. That gives you a 28 mile round trip and that is something that people will travel for. My wife and I uh, frequently go to Virginia uh, to ride the uh, uh, trails up there. We've been to South Carolina, we've been to North Carolina, we've been to Maryland to ride rail trails. And this is the length that you wanna go, 25, 30, 35 miles. And with the beauty of this section, it really makes it a viable tourist attraction. Completely changes the nature of the trail. Now there's some issues. We're gonna to have to work with Elizabethan and Johnson City on this, and there's no guarantee that, that either of them will be interested in doing this project. We think so. Uh, I've talked to Dan Reese, I've talked to Dan Schumeyer of the Tweetsie Trail Conservancy, and they are very, very interested and very enthusiastic about this, but you don't know until you ask the question. Uh, the Tweetsie Trail Conservancy, which is the private group that grew out of the Tweetsie Trail Task Force, uh, will almost certainly be on board with us. We're actually going to be on uh, State Line Road 19E and Mill Pond Road for a good portion of this ex uh, expansion. Mill Pond Road, quiet residential street, don't see a problem. 19E, it's got wide margins, but you know, that's, I've ridden it many times, but for most cyclists, it's not pleasant because the traffic is whizzing by. We're gonna to have to get approval from uh, TDOT on this. State Line Road, if you look hard, what you'll see is that the Tweetsie rail bed still exists alongside State Line Road. 
And we might be able to work out somehow to use that old rail bed. But in any case, we can always use uh, the road, which is not terribly busy at this section. The river crossing, it is the biggest issue by far. There are engineering problems that are gonna to have to be dealt with. Mike, you may have already solved that for us though. And financing it is another matter. Uh, it's gonna be expensive, whatever we do. Although there is a less expensive way to get across that I think would work if we can get the powers to, uh, that be to sign off on it. Otherwise you're looking at a very expensive project. So bottom line, there are so many benefits to this that hey, we'd be crazy not to try it. Uh, I hope you'll accept this donation. Um, then we want to, uh, if we can get your support and the County Commission's support, we'd like to go to Elizabethan and Johnson City and the Tweetsie Trail Conservancy and see if we can get them on board and start developing this as a new section of trail. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, be happy to answer any questions you've got. Okay, I, I have guess some, that... but I, I want to open the floor to see if any other committee members have some first. Okay, I'll go ahead and go. Um, Ken, at what stage uh, is the Parks and Rec Committee on this particular issue? Has it already come through your committee? What was the discussion and the outcome of that? Well, the discussion was if we get this donation and if we can find a, a, a community sponsor, we're immediately going to create the, uh, uh, the park. Um, now, to do that, as I said, all, basically all we have to do is put up a sign. Um, the, uh, the roads are already in frequent use. We just designate it as, uh, I don't know, Valley Forge Park. We'll find a name for it. And we're ready to go. That takes us from Valley Forge all the way up to the river, and we work from there. Okay. Um, Ken, this, this is very a very minor, minor thing, but may I suggest that you maybe use a, a term that is a more linear term instead of the word park, because uh, at least on the commission, we talk about so many different parks over the past three years that I've been involved. And I, I just don't want it to get confused with a playground type scenario. This is something completely different. This is more of a tourist attraction. Um, so well, if, if we actually get it to the point that it becomes part of the Tweetsie Trail, that's the way it will be designated. To begin with, it's going to be the Valley Forge Linear Park or something along those lines. Uh, okay. We'll we'll make clear that this is a trail and not a not a playground. The chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, anyone that that's familiar with these things recognizes that it's a, a linear park is actually a known quantity. The Appalachian Trail is a federal linear park. It's one of our federal gifts to ourselves. The, uh, the Virginia Creeper is a linear park. Uh, the Over Mountain Victory Trail is a linear park and a commemorative, commemorative motor route, but it, it wouldn't really be that ambiguous, I don't think. That's a, that is a minor thing. Yeah, I mean, I said it was minor, but occasionally the word linear got left out in the discussion, and I think that's important. Uh, to have that linear in there. We'll um, be sure to include it. Thank you so much, Ken. I appreciate your understanding on that. Um, can you give us an approximate description of what the sponsor in Valley Forge will be responsible for? Like, are we talking hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands? What are they committing to when they sponsor that? Well, the, the sponsor for the park will actually be operating the park for us, uh, just as the Roan Mountain Recreation Foundation operates the Eric Anderson Park in Roan Mountain. The Appalachian Paddling Enthusiasts uh, operate uh, Greenbridge Landing Park. A new organization that's being formed in uh, Fish Springs will, be, will operate the uh, new park that's being built there. Uh, they commit to, to running the park, running uh, raising funds, we officially own the park, we provide the insurance, and we provide an operating subsidy as we can afford to do it. 
but it's a cooperative agreement with a community group to uh, for them to basically be responsible for the park. Okay. Um, you now we're very very flexible on the agreements that we uh, we have. Um, we've always told the groups that have considered signing a memorandum of understanding on the operation of the park. Look, we we want an agreement that works for you. Uh, so tell us what, what you want to do, how you want to do it, and we'll almost certainly agree to it. Okay, you had mentioned walking through the tunnel. Is biking ever going to be possible through the tunnel? Absolutely. There's already a, a part concrete, part asphalt trail all the way through the all the way through the tunnel. Um, it's it's a it's a great route. And okay. Chairman Holden. Yes. To chime in, I did. My son and I went Sunday afternoon and walked it. It is, it's just a hidden gem. It's beautiful. We walked from the Valley Forge side up to the Ritter Town to the Hampton Inn through the tunnel. And we ran into several people that were already on the trail and they, they live nearby and they love it and they walk it quite often. But it's, uh, it was breathtaking. It was a beautiful day and it was just, uh, just phenomenal that that's in our county. It's beautiful. So I just wanted to let the committee know that also. Yeah, I would urge you, if you get have the opportunity, drive up to Valley Forge, go down Mill Pond Road to the end, and take a walk. You'll, you'll just be amazed. It is. It's really it's gorgeous. Okay, and the next question I have is more of a liability question, so it might be more for Attorney Harden. But I'm just wondering, at the moment that we accept the donation and it becomes Carter County property, I'm assuming that we immediately become liable for any areas that are not quite what they ought to be right now, how do we prevent getting ourselves in trouble there? Um, I, I'm going to leave my video off because it tends to make me freeze, but uh, certainly at the moment we take ownership, we're responsible for the property. Uh, the insurance coverage that we have, of course, we'd have to notify them of, of the new ownership and, and certainly that would apply as it would with every county owned property. Uh, obviously the specific concerns that Mr. Uh, Gooch has identified are, are what I would see just kind of common sense, um, the bridge uh, and you know, I, I'm no engineer. I don't know anything about the, the structural integrity of the, the tunnel, but uh, it's one thing for people to be there uh, it's another thing to invite people there. Uh, so I would just, you know, like I said, I'm no expert, but I, I would assume that we need to get uh, those, those portions of the trail at least evaluated uh, to make sure they're safe to actually invite the public to use. Can we protect ourselves, uh, Attorney Hardin, by placing signs along those routes until we make them safe? Well, uh, of course, nothing's going to be perfect. And no matter, you know, you could put, uh, you know, board it up and put skull and crossbones on it, but if somebody gets hurt, they're going to sue us anyway. So there's no perfect answer. Uh, but certainly, you know, it would, it would behoove us to uh, get it evaluated as soon as possible and not necessarily, you know, put out the welcome mat until until that process is completed. So I guess the point I'm trying to get to is if this is going to be a very, very expensive project and we don't immediately have funds available to finance it, then it's going to be a while. It could be, let's say, three years before it was made safe. So you know, are we going to be protected for three years after accepting a donation like this? I certainly can't promise that. You know, obviously, uh, if, if I had my way, and of course, I'm conservative, uh, and I don't want to discourage a, a free gift of, of 28 acres or whatever it is, and I'm, it looks beautiful from the pictures, I'm certain it is, uh, but I, I think it would be more of a... Uh, no trespassing situation versus an, an, a welcome situation until 
until we were certain it was safe. Well, that would certainly apply to the bridge. However, for the trails on either end, I uh, don't see any reason that we couldn't uh, immediately make them available. Uh, they, they are perfectly safe, uh, but definitely no trespassing signs should go up on the bridge. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. And I, like I said, I don't, I don't know anything about the tunnel. It looked, it looked pretty uh, substantial and, and sturdy. I've not been through it, but uh, I, I don't know anything about that uh, or the, you know, integrity of, of that tunnel. But th those were the two things that just jumped out to me, the tunnel and the bridge. All, all I can say about the tunnel is that it appears, and I'm an engineer, uh, the tunnel appears to be in excellent condition. Excellent. I, I, I see no concerns with it whatsoever. That doesn't mean that a rock couldn't fall out of the, the roof and hit somebody, but I don't think it's highly unlikely. Sure. And I agree with you there. Anything can happen, of course, but uh, I think it would, uh, out of reasonable, reasonable caution, I think it's something that should be evaluated before we just, uh, uh, you know, invite folks to use it. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Chairman. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So there's nothing that says that we cannot capture the land, which is the, the first logical step in this there's nothing that says that we we have to open it to to visitorship once we capture it in fact we can keep it closed until the engineering and all of the particulars are are covered that mr harden just identified but if the offer is only extended for a limited time it would be incumbent on us to capture the land and then make a a, a solid business plan as to how to move forward and I think that Mr. Googe and, and Mr. Harden actually are in alignment on this. I, I would agree with that. Uh, Josh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, I, I do agree. We've got a real problem at the, uh, the river. We handle that with a no trespassing sign just as quickly as we can though. We get the trails open for use by the public particularly the communities of Valley Forge and Hampton. Chairwoman Holdren. Yes, please speak. Um, this is a question for Ken. Ken, is that the same tunnel that the city of Elizabethan's water line runs through? Yes, sir, that's exactly right. The, uh, the, the uh, water line runs down uh, the entire length of this uh, section. Uh, it goes down the, the road on the Hampton side. It goes in the uh, through the in the it's actually buried in the bed of the tunnel then it goes underneath the doe river and then comes back up and as i understand it goes down the road on the valley forge side okay thank you Well, I guess that's it. Um, I, I would certainly urge you to accept this donation, assuming that Josh hasn't found any problems with the title. Um, let's, let's get this thing accepted and let us get to work. I, I am so excited about this. It just looks like a tremendous opportunity that we cannot afford to let go. And thank you for this wonderful presentation. And I'm sorry that we missed out on Dan. Um, and so at this time, I would like to open the floor for a motion on this issue, if anyone would like to make one. Well, I would like to make a motion to, to go forward with it, to accept the property. Um, by the way, I, Ken, while he was talking there at the end, uh, I had to take a phone call, so I hope, I hope you didn't call on me for anything. I apologize if you did. Well, I, I, actually, I think the committee just made you chairman or something along those lines. Uh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it would be secretary is the punishment, Bob. <laughs> no offense, when? <laughs> okay, so we have a motion to accept the donation. Does anybody want to second that motion? I'll second it, Thomas Prophet. Thank you. Motion by Jenkins, second by Prophet. Any other discussion? Chairwoman Aldrin? Yes. 
Does this donation state that it must be used for the trail no matter what? No, there are no restrictions on, on the property whatsoever. I've already checked that out. This is a free and clear gift to the county. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so uh, the motion on the floor is to accept the donation of approximately 28 acres uh, in the area of Valley Forge to Hampton that could potentially link the Quitsy Trail and add a little over four miles to that, um, getting us closer to our final destination of Roan Mountain. Uh, so, Ms. Gwynn, if you will call the roll on the motion to accept this donation, please. Austin James. Yes. Ginger Holdren. Yes. Randall Jenkins. Yes. Daniel McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. Robert Acuff. Yes. Mike Hill. Yes. Brad Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yay! Motion passes, Ken. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'll I'll inform the uh, the Parks and Rec Board. I know they're going to be delighted. Uh, Randall, get us a sponsor. Ken, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you all very much. Uh, I'll go ahead and get off and so the rest of the meeting can go on. Thank you all Thanks. again. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Okay. So um, the other thing under new business is a Fish Springs Park discussion. Is anybody in the group capable of speaking much about that? Commissioner or Chairman Holder, I had requested uh, Isaiah put this on the agenda. Um, we, after I, doing some research on it, there is a situation with it and I will go ahead and turn it over to the county attorney and let him kind of explain what we're going to have to do. We have to kind of repeat the process of accepting that donation also. Uh, well, I guess first a uh, decision needs to be made if y'all even want to consider it tonight. Uh, you let me know and I'll tell you everything I can about it. Uh, just a little bit on the background, the Union Baptist Church donated this piece of property um, up at Little Milligan with some stipulations that it be turned into a park and it has a specific name. Um, and at the time it came through Parks and Rec and came through the commission December of, I wanna say 18, with the survey before December. Once the commission accepted it in December, my understanding is that a new survey was done that included a 40 foot right of way, which was not a, a part of the survey that the commission accepted. So the property survey changed yeah, a little bit. And so um, when I went to check to see if the, the property was in the county's name, nothing has, there's nothing been done on that. Um, our county attorney wasn't even aware of the donation. So um, we basically got to repeat the process if the committee, if it's the committee's will to accept this piece of property um, and they're, they're already working on a 501c3 and also getting someone like Randall's been tasked with a group to take care of the park, which is going to be the Friends of Fish Springs. So it's got, and there's already been plans for a park to be put there. Um, it's just missing a few steps, um, very important steps. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that at the will of the community. I will basically have to start over is, is what my understanding is on accepting the donation from the park. And I had included the letter and the criteria, and I know everything got out late, but I had included that to go into the packet of where the, the letter from the trustees from the Union Baptist telling us that they are donating it and the stipulations that go with it. Chairwoman okay. Holden. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we accept this donation. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second Daniel McIntyre. Okay, motion by Jane, second by McIntyre. So we're in discussion on the issue now. And I would just like to ask Attorney Hardin or Mayor Woodby to speak to um, 
what what did that 40 foot right of way change about our initial acceptance of this? Okay, I, I think I can answer that part. Uh, when the original uh, vote was taken um, by the full commission, the property had not been subdivided yet. There was a larger uh, parcel there of, of 4.3 acres. And so there was discussions of uh, donating part of that to the county, uh, but there was never a survey done dividing up specifically what part we were getting or how that part was gonna be accessed. And there was no mention whatsoever of the stipulation uh, of using it as a park or naming it after this um, uh, lady that they wanted it named after, Kathleen, Kathleen and Ralph Smith of that community. So none of those conditions were accepted by the commission originally, and they would have to be accepted, of course. Uh, and now the property has been resurveyed and the access is off of a 40 foot right of way um, instead of uh, the public road. So it, it's a, a lot different situation than it was. And the, the letter that uh, Mayor Whitby provided, I had never seen before. Uh, it was addressed to, to Mayor Barnett and I'm, it's not dated. I don't know when they gave it to him, um, but yeah, not, none of this was known at the time when the commission voted the first time. So the public will not be able to access it from a majorly traveled road. It, they have to turn off first. Well, it, it would be off of Whaley Town Road onto a right-of-way, and that would be the, the one rub there. Of course, it doesn't have direct public road access, so we'd have to make sure in the deed to the county that there was a, a, a public right-of-way designated over that 40-foot wide stretch of road there. Because on the survey that exists, it's, it says it's a 40-foot right-of-way to access a different lot, not the lot they're giving us, although it runs you know, into that lot. So that, that would be the one point of contention. Obviously it would have to be dedicated to public use uh, for a public park. It couldn't be just restricted to access, you know, uh, for, for residential purposes or whatever. I mean, it have to be a, a public dedication there. So that, that's a big change from just turning directly off the road. So that means that the county would be responsible for graveling or, or whatever we chose to do to that right of way? At, at minimum sharing in it, uh, but based upon the, the level of traffic that we would probably create on it. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, we would end up maintaining that portion. I mean, I don't think it's very, from what I can tell on the survey, it's uh, about 330 feet long, 40 feet wide. I mean, it's not very big, but certainly I think we would end up maintaining that. Okay. The only other thing that I have a question or comment about is that in the discussions that I've heard recently over the past few months since the school report came out on potentially closing some schools in the future, um, I heard that Little Milligan was going to ask for their facility to become a neighborhood community center if that school was ever closed. Um, so I would just say to everybody, keep that in mind uh, as we vote on this tonight. You know, and that, that may be 10 years down the road or that may never happen, but um, I know that that was part of the discussion if Little Milligan was ever to close as a school. Uh, Does anybody the, have anything else? Yes, Attorney Harden. Let me say one other thing. That in, in their letter, uh, they said, you know, the property uh, will be used for a park. And if, if it's no longer used for a park, it will revert to the church. Uh, there's nothing in there about, you know, timeline uh, of how long we have to make it a park. Uh, and certainly we wouldn't want to get into a spot where we, you know, develop the property or grade it because I understand it's, it's, uh, it's going to take some, you know, grading work at the least due to the topography there. So we, we wouldn't want to get into a spot where we put a lot of money into uh, improving it or the road. 
and you know we we fall short of some deed stipulation about uh, when it becomes a park. Okay. Um, I had just thought of something else and it has, it's left my mind again. Um, oh, okay. Mayor Woodby came to us last month saying that the Gap Creek Park project was delayed and they were getting a little bit of flack because we didn't have the manpower to work on that park. So, Randall, since you're a member of the Parks and Rec Committee, can you speak to, you know, the need for this park or, you know, if we have, uh, if, the, if the Parks and Rec Committee supports this and if, if we have funds available, workforce available, if the mayor or Randall, either one could speak to that, I would appreciate it. I mean, I think Parks and Rec is behind this project. They started it. And as far as as far as a group behind it, the uh, the uh, the church and let's see, several other people was behind it, and they're willing to help out with it, from what I understand. I mean, it just I really don't know what where it went sideways. So, uh, Mayor, do you? I, I think this park, there's a push to get this park moving. I know J.R. Campbell, you know, Randall, you know, we've been in meetings and he's currently putting together a group to take care of the park and keep it updated. Um, and, you know, Mayor Barnett had had the CTE program at Hampton already do the plans for the park and what it's going to entail and what's going to go on the park, the actual equipment. I mean, all of that was ready. It's, it's still ready to go. All of that's still available. Um we just kind of ran into a snag when I started to check and make sure that the property was deeded to the county. And when I'd done that, that's where we're at right now. Um, county attorney was just not aware of any of this. So um, I, I think the community wants the park and I, I really think it's it can be done. Um, that's just my opinion on it. And, and I think the people are there to help, especially with Union Baptist. I think their support also, the church is behind the support of the park also. Okay. Any other discussion? Well, I'll add that. I mean, I don't want to see as far as support goes on any of the the pocket parks. The way the you know Ken mentioned it with with sponsor groups and on in every area. I mean, the just think of the turnout that we had with Green Bridge, Green Bridge Landing. I mean, the first day that we asked for help, there was eighty some volunteers showed up up there. So as far as support goes to whenever it comes to a project, I think I think we'll have it once we get to that point. Um, I think we just need to, to just to just push through and, and get this get it under our belt here. So it's just my my opinion. Okay, thank you. Permission to speak, Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Hill. The only caveat I would have on this is that there's a the catchphrase that so long as it was used as a park, it would remain the county's property um, with verbiage that that allows the church to repo it at such time as it might have been improved, but not actually fully developed as a park. Yeah, Attorney Hardin, you can help us with the language on that, correct, sir? Sure. Yeah, I, I just uh, like I said, I have no idea when the, this letter was given to Mayor Barnett because it's not dated. But uh, you know, I, I, we can't add words to their gift. We either take you know we take it as it's offered. I don't mind to clarify it with these folks uh, if if I can get a, a number to contact one of these trustees and make sure that we're on the same page there to where we're protected if we invest in developing it. You know, I don't. I have no reason to think that the church would be unreasonable about that. Um, but yeah, we, we can't just, we can't change the way they've offered their gift. We just gotta make sure they're offering it. And we, we understand each other and what's being offered and what's being accepted. Attorney Hardin, 
Attorney Harden, I would just have to say that Commissioner Hill makes a good point. And I, I think that we can accept their terms with some clarifications. Don't you think that you could add in some clarifications that would protect the county's investment? Um, Certainly, as long as yeah, as long as the church is in approval with it, and they would have to be obviously to sign the deed conveying the property to us. So I can certainly put uh, talk with them and put language in there that satisfies everybody. And if they sign off and approve the gift after that, with uh, by signing the deed conveying it to the county, then ev everything is good. So I, yeah, I'm not trying to discourage moving forward. Uh, and certainly, if if they don't. Uh, uh, agree with us on, on our intent, what we're talking about here, then they just won't make the gift. Okay, anything else? All right, let's take a vote on acceptance of um, the Fish Springs Park um, with the new survey completion. Austin James? Yes. Ginger Holdren? Yes. Randall Jenkins? Yes. Daniel McIntyre? Yes. Thomas Prophet? Yes. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yes. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Um, What's the pleasure of the committees tonight? Do you all want to take a break right here or try to finish old business quickly? Well, we've been in the saddle for over an hour and a half. Let's take about 10. Okay, I, I would agree with that. Let's take a 10 minute break and reconvene at 7.30. That's a little bit less than 10 minutes, 7.30. Yippee ki -yay. Mm -hmm.
Hey, everybody, it's 730. If you could let me know you're back on, please. Johnson on. Randall's here. Thanks. That's good. I, I think I can see most of you, so I think we're good to get started back up. So our new business is concluded. We're in old business. And um, because of our special guest that's here from um, Northeast State, let's go straight to item E on your agenda, which is the Northeast State contract lease proposal. So I will let um, Mayor Woodby and or uh, Ms. Bullock speak to that if either one of you all wants to go first. Um, I had uh, Chairman Grunstaff include the proposal in the packets. I'm not real sure if anybody's got a chance to review it yet. Um, so I'm not real sure if I've asked Dr. Bullock to come on um, when we're not prepared to really talk about it. Um, I'll let that be the will of the committee. Um, and I apologize to Dr. Bullock in advance. <laughs> um, so Chairman Holder, I'll let you, the committee, decide how they want to handle this. Um, it is a, a pretty important topic. Yes. So as, as we previously stated, Dr. Bullock, we did not get um, the agenda or any of the attachments until, you know, they were mailed late this afternoon. And then some people who have jobs didn't get to see them at all. So uh, committee members, would you like to at least hear what Dr. Bullock has to say on the topic or what, what's your pleasure this evening? Chairman? Yes. I would like to hear Ms. Bullock, Dr. Bullock out, please. Absolutely. And welcome her to the committee. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. And good evening and congratulations on that piece of land. That's exciting. I ride the Tweetsie, so that's good to hear. Um, as you all know, we've been in relationship with, with the building and the facility in Carter County for 25 years. We met with Mayor Barnett and now Mayor Woodby to discuss a reduction in the lease rate in order to begin to have conversations related to updating the facility and or transitioning that facility. Um, and certainly we were in the middle of roundtable discussions with TCAT Elizabethton, industry roundtable discussions and other um, discussions prior to COVID hitting. Our lease, that lease becomes up for renewal in June. Um, so we wanted to begin now early with conversations about the lease rate. Mayor, I do not know the material uh, that you forwarded. What we've proposed is a break even rate. I, I don't know if that's what you, okay. So we ran some numbers and currently um, we can break even by leasing that property for about $86,000 a year. Um, we are committed to staying in the facility. We know the students want us there. We believe we provide wonderful opportunities. And so this just begins a conversation for us and the commission to talk about a reduced lease term. Um, we've discussed before some really great opportunities to take some time to think about the future of programming for this facility. Uh, unfortunately, TBR would not allow us probably to do a whole lot of capital project, capital investment activities into the facility unless it was part of our inventory. As it becomes part of our inventory, naturally it becomes part of our assets and we maintain that and, and include IT police support, IT infrastructure support, that type of thing. That's not the nature of this conversation tonight. It's just to propose the new lease rate, a five-year term at $86,000 a year. That would be Northeast State's break-even cost. Last month when we discussed um, the proposal that had been presented to the committee, um, we had asked for some kind of commitment or clarification from Northeast State as to what programs they might add or uh, things of that nature as we look forward in this relationship. Can you speak to that, Dr. Bullock? We are currently engaged in broad-based strategic planning right now at the college. And so I sent Mayor Woodby a proposal that I shared um, for a potential opportunity. I feel um, I never like being part of groups that tell others what they should do. 
right? So it's important to me that as a higher education entity, we are locked into Carter County, Unicoi County, and Johnson County for what the needs are. Um, I will add that I think that you, you guys in particular have an opportunity to think about energy and the environment, unlike other places in our region. So I talked to the mayor about programs related to energy and the environment, in addition to the assets and the programs that we deliver now. But this is early, an early conversation. We would want to engage some of your industry partners, nuclear fuels, other impact plastics, other partners, um, AO Smith, water safety, water quality, things like that. Solar, we've talked about. Um, but we do not right now have a list of programs, Commissioner Holdren, that we would roll out without that community-based input, uh, industry input. Okay, I think one of the concerns for me personally, Dr. Bullock, is not so much maybe new programs, although those are very interesting um, and, and exciting. I think we're also interested in the conversation taking place about students being able to complete their associate's degree here in Elizabeth and without having to do much travel to Bluntville. Can you speak to that at all? I'm not prepared to give you uh, the number of students who can complete there. I should have been better prepared to be candid with you, Commissioner. But what we do know is that the students who are at this facility can complete over, I believe it's 150 programs online beginning at the Elizabethan site and then staying at the Elizabethan site to continue if they're unwilling or unable to drive over to Blountville for the second half of their programs. We also have discussed in our foundation, we're seeing both food insecurity and transportation needs as a, as a major issue for the students returning post COVID. And we've had discussions about gas cards to get them from the Elizabethan campus or their home to the Blountville campus should they enlist in a program, for instance, nursing, Every second year nursing student in Northeast State finishes out at the Regional Center for Nursing Health Professions in Kingsport. So we've talked about the need to have gas vouchers, gas cards for those students to finish out in Kingsport. Um, so we recognize the, some of this, the signature niche programs that are completed in other locations. We need to make sure we accommodate those students. Okay, very good. Um, committee members, what questions do you have? Chairwoman. Yes, Commissioner James. Um, <clears throat> I only got two, uh, two comments on it. Um, one, uh, I think we need, before anything's done, to get our floor plan outlay from the architects and actually get a detailed plan as to what square footage and space that they will be occupying during the lease term. Because as, as of right now, we really, we have nothing to, to look at as far as a floor plan to see what they're, they're going to maintain. And second thing is, is before we do anything, it, we probably need to refer this to budget and let them look at that and see how that's going to affect us financially on that up there and what it's going to do and what our expenses are and what we're, we're taking, we're covering currently at this situation. Because even with being budget chair, I'm, I haven't got into that yet with uh, the director. And so I, I'm unaware and I'm sure everybody is, else is as to what it's costing us to even operate that facility. Um, so I just think that's a couple things we need to look at as we're getting into this. That's all. Okay, thank you, Commissioner James. Anybody else? Madam Chair Brad Johnson. Yes, sir. In reference to our uh, approved March 2nd building and grounds uh, in the new section, which is stated Northeast State Contract, <clears throat> there are several action items and questions that were asked in there that needs to be addressed I know their renewal is not until June, but these are very important things. Like one, they're saying over a five year period that, and I don't want to get in depth with it because like you said, we only got the information today, but last month in our discussion, if you'll refer to it, it stated, you know, that they were presently paying 177,000 per year, correct? And then the next portion was that they also pay a portion of the utilities based on their square footage. And then there was concerning questions asked that even though they were only paying for so much square footage that they were actually controlling a whole floor of which, you know, the comments was to get Shaw's and Shanks involved. 
in developing the Diaz bill and to sit down with them. If they're only proposing in the in the eighty some thousand dollar lease, why the big reduction from one hundred seventy seven per year down to eighty nine with no more increase in services? That's a big loss. Uh, who pays the insurance? That's the other question. But I, I really think it's kind of premature on all of this until everybody has had time to uh, digest this and form their question base for this lease. Because there's a lot of unanswered questions if you look at our minutes. Yeah, I believe that uh, whenever those documents came forward to us this afternoon, we saw communication between Mayor Woodby and Dr. Bullock along those lines. I believe Mayor Woodby communicated all of our thoughts and questions to Dr. Bullock. Um, so, Dr. Bullock, would it be too much to ask for you to maybe go back and at least give us a little one sentence or any kind of blurb type answer to each of those individually? Would that be something you'd be willing to do for us? I absolutely can get the information related to the utilities, the insurance coverage, the square footage, um, the support services and wraparound services that we provide to students um, and, the, and the cost outlay. I, I can provide those things. I'm not able to provide a list of potential new programs, but now understanding what your question is, it's not about new assets or new programs that you're looking for. It is the completion of a two-year degree within the facility. And I could get some more information on that as well. That would be amazing. That would help us so much as this committee tries to take the first step on a vote as we send it to the full commission or to budget committee. Understood, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to weigh in on any any part of this discussion? Uh, Chairman Holdren, just to let the committee know, the ASBIL drawings from Shaw and Shank should be completed within the next week. So those will be able to be looked at as far as the square footage and what everybody's occupying and what's not being occupied. Um, so um, those will those will be written, be completed. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Brad Johnson, uh, question. As they complete them within this next week, don't you think, and Madam Chair, do you think also that copies of those need to be uh, sent to the superintendent or the director of schools of our county for the CTE program that we're looking at, mm -hmm. and also to Northeast State to see uh, for their use and if there is expansion where it can be and to be used as an instrument in our discussion as far as our square foot prices and agreements on the next five year lease. I agree with that. Um, Tim Shaw, not Tom, but Tim is currently working with Dr. McAbee. They've already been um, conversating on square footage and what currently the high school's holding now. Um, so those have already been in the works. They are communicating with each other on the CTE programs to get a plan on those. They're just waiting. We're just waiting on the ASBL drawings to actually get the square footage of all the buildings. Yeah. But I will forward those to Dr. Bullock. Um, as soon as I get my hands on them, I will get those out to all the parties involved. And I'm assuming those will be on those large sheets, not something that you can send to us individually. So if you could just send out an email that says they're here in my office, come no, by. They will put them on a, a PDF where I can send them out. I mean, you can come here and look at them, but they'll be on a smaller version that I can email out. Um, but that would be it to each committee member. If you want to come here, we'll uh, we'll roll them out on the conference tables and everybody can view them. Well, basically they're five size, sheet size in any architectural drawing. But like the mayor says, a PDF file can be sent to any individual to where you can access and see everything that's on the big sheet. Right. And that's what <laughs> I will do as soon as uh, Tom gets those to me. Okay, very good. Yes. I'd like to move that we place this on the agenda for the May meeting, invite Dr. Bullock back and um, get the information disseminated maybe two or three days ahead of the meeting. And I think we'll be in a really good position at that point to, to move forward. Chairwoman, I second that. 
Any discussion on that? I would just like to add one statement. I, Dr. Bola, I really appreciate you coming to the meeting tonight, and I apologize that we wasn't prepared as we needed to be to try to give you more answers of where, where we're looking to be, but I apologize for that. I think I was the one not re not prepared, so please accept my apologies as well. And um, I also to want to apologize. <laughs> I know, I know so you and I have talked, Dr. Bullock, about everything, and and we I didn't realize everything was going to get out so late to the committee this evening with everything that I had included for our discussion. So I don't think the committee got to fully review all the documents. Um, so my apologies also. Well, you know, I think I think we need to get in on those apologies, too. So we apologize, Dr. Bullock. Please accept the committee's apology to you. No, we will get the information to you. We'll get it to you in advance. And I look forward to the May meeting agenda. I'm hopeful that we can we can come to an agreement on a rate that's that's a win win for both of us. So thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Because we do have a motion on the floor. Repeat All right, Ms. Gwynn, if you'll call the roll and we'll vote on uh, approval to put this on the May agenda with all parties being more prepared to add to the conversation. Hopefully by then we'll be in full session live instead of by Zoom. Austin James? Yes. Ginger Haldron? Yes. Randall Jenkins? Randall Jenkins? Sorry. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Daniel McInturf? Yes. Thomas Prophet? Yes. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson. Yes. Okay, then that's the deal, Dr. Bullock. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Okay, now, um, old business. Um, most of these things, I believe the mayor would probably be the most versed in speaking to. If anybody else on here has anything to add, please do so, but Mayor Whitby, as a general guideline, I'm just going to say start at 6A and go through those as quickly as you can. I'm going to get it. All right, courthouse security project is complete. The single point of entry goes live next Monday. We will do a press release um, about what's required and what we'll be having in here at the courthouse, hopefully on Thursday. So that is a completed project. All commissioners will receive key cards for the entryways to, in the back doors. Um, you can... It's a one single point of entry, but you can exit any door in the building um, for the public. Um, Sluter property, the weather's getting better and we plan on trying to get up there next week. Um, my maintenance guys are gonna get up and replace and get everything ran. Uh, Director Schutler, we're gonna try to get recovery soldiers up there to do the painting and the work that needs to be done. ADA transition plan, I think we've had a discussion on that. And if somebody else wants to chime in. On anything. County Archive Department location. Um, I don't have anything on that. I'm not sure if Chairman Holdren does know there. Contract we've approved. Chamber of Commerce building, Shaw and Shanks are assessing the property currently. Um, and they're gonna look and see what kind of state it's in and what it may need cost to get the building up to make it to, to par. Um, workforce development complex, we've discussed the as build drawings are in process of being completed. And as soon as I get those, I will get those out to the committee by email. Um, Chancery Court door contract, we've discussed, and I'll get the committee a breakdown of the, the cost of that project, the bid cost. And I have no knowledge of item I. Okay, um, I believe Isaiah has joined us. Isaiah, would you be able to speak about the detention center exterior cleaning? Yeah, I'd be I'd be more than happy. I was actually waiting till commissioner comments are closer to the end of the meeting. I have a few things I'd like to say as well. Uh, can you can you hear me fine? Yes. Okay. So uh, I did speak with the sheriff. Um, he is still in the process of obtaining quotes. He has obtained two to date. Um, he's still in the process of obtaining another quote. So I'm not going to give those numbers out right now. Um, I will state that um, we got good numbers and then we got some rather 
um, surprising numbers. Uh, so we're hoping that the third or maybe fourth quote that comes in will, will kind of even those out. Uh, as soon as I get those from him, um, we can establish those. We'll, you know, I'll forward them on or, or whomever will forward them on. Okay, sounds good. Why don't we just keep rolling and let you have the floor first under commissioner comments? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. So uh, originally I had come on and I, I did want to express my apologies. Uh, my daughter did get sick earlier today. And so I obviously wasn't able to join the meeting um, I, till uh, just recently, just to try to be able to listen in. Um, I do apologize uh, in my email as I sent out. Uh, for some reason or another, I sent it out earlier. Um, some of you has got it at three. Um, some of you has got it at, uh, according to Mike, uh, five, almost six o'clock. So I'm, I'm not entirely certain as to what happened. However, uh, I do express my apologies. Um, and the next thing about it is, um, you know, I've been thinking about it after listening to some of the comments and some of the things that have been made during the meeting. I don't greatly appreciate them. Um, I do understand that there were issues and, you know, I, things come up. Um, so, um, Next week, next month on the agenda, uh, you can expect to elect a new chairperson. Uh, I'll be stepping down. Um, somebody that has more time, uh, more will, uh, more will, and uh, apparently can be a slightly a bit more punctual than I can, can take over that uh, cake over that role, and uh, hopefully they can uh, do a better job than uh, how some of you feel that, that uh, I've been doing. So I greatly appreciate you all letting me have it for. A little while, but uh, I'm ready to move on with it. So, okay, Isaiah, that's 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 sad to hear. Um, uh, you know, other commissioners have changed their minds throughout the the year, and and. We will certainly allow you the right to change your mind next month if you want to do that, sir. Um, we appreciate what you do. We know you work hard. We know you're a father. And uh, but, but the fact remains that we were not able to be as prepared tonight as we could have been um, if we'd been given the information earlier. We, we did have a lot of documents tonight, and I was out on my job Um and didn't get home to read them until a little after four. And I, you know, like I would have loved to have called Ken Googe before the meeting began. I didn't get to do that, etc. cetera. Um, so I hope you do understand where I'm coming from and any other comments that have been made tonight. I hope you, you do understand where they're coming from. Oh, and without doubt. And, you know, I, like I said, it, uh, originally as I come on and my entire intent was, was, you know, to graciously apologize. And, um, you know, as I said, sometimes stuff comes up. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do so um, in a, uh, a timely fashion. But, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm ready to uh, I'll succeed this seat to someone else. Um, I'll sit back and uh, kind of watch what's going on and uh, participate as I can. Um, and uh, I'll be more than happy to do so. Like I said, my entire intent was to come on and uh, you know, apologize for, for some of the issues that I, that I saw, like I said. Um, but, um, but I've, I've pretty much made my mind up on that. I, I greatly appreciate the uh, uh, opportunity to talk, though. Okay, the floor is open for any other commissioners that would like to speak. Here, Mr. Brad Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, in reference to, again, back to our March 2nd, there's a couple, it may be action items on there. One, they're both, I think. One is in uh, the old business, the recycle center uh, concerning, there was a motion made there to allow Burke to release funds for the director alliance to proceed with the construction of the building. Uh, what Was that completed? For a fact, we got the building underway. Do we know, Mayor, anything about that? It'll be under uh, letter C. I apologize, Brad. Can you repeat? I'm sorry. <laughs> March, March, March the 2nd minutes, it's already just been approved. Okay. And let's see, I think it, the pages are not numbered. 
mine was messed up. Let's see. It would be, uh, the caption would be under Recycle Center, uh, which was add on. Uh, there was a motion at the bottom of it, which was made by uh, Chair Grindstaff, seconded by Commissioner Jenkins. I have the Director Burke to release the funds to allow Director Lyons to process the uh, construction of the building. I do not have an update on that, no. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then the other the other one that was in discussion, it was under new business, mark paragraph five, uh, having to relate to the maintenance, the mowing and so forth around our buildings and the workforce development uh, of which you yourself address and also Commissioner McIntyre from his uh, uh, recommendations and thoughts concerning how to get it done. Was there anything done about the, the mowing issue? Yeah. We contracted it out for the rest of the fiscal budget year. Um, it is with Sycamore Gardens. They are taking care of all the lawns. Um, we took the lowest, they were the lowest quote. And then when July, we will readdress how this committee would like to continue handling the grounds um, because our maintenance could not handle the, all the mowing. If you want to continue to bid it back out or if we want to discuss hiring um, a part-time seasonal and another full-time maintenance to help the maintenance maintain all the properties, which includes the mowing and the landscaping. Okay, has that been taken to the budget committee yet? Yeah. That is, that's already passed, then. Yeah, that's already passed. The okay. money was approved and appropriated, and the contract with uh, Sycamore Gardens was signed this week, and they began mowing. Uh, actually, signed last week. They began mowing. They will take care of the grounds every Monday. If you haven't gotten to see what's been done so far, you need to take a look because the elections commission, the elections office looks wonderful. They've completely redone the landscaping. Um, it's beautiful. So, and they've just been going two weeks. <laughs> so it, it looks good and it's, it's moving. Commissioner Johnson, if I, if I can, I'll, I'll address the other issue there that you had raised. Um, I did speak with uh, uh, finance director Burke. To my knowledge, those monies were released and they were allowed to action um, whether or not they have yet, I, I have no idea. I haven't heard anything from uh, their chair, which I, I believe is uh, Commissioner Gary uh, Bailey. Um, but uh, but yes, I, I spoke with him, and they they were allowed to move forward with that at their will. It, uh, Chairman Grassley, isn't that related to the new? Uh, uh, let me think. What is that piece of equipment where they had just released the bid on? to install, wasn't that related to the building itself? Um, no, the, the issue that, that we allowed uh, was an issue that, to be honest, I was very surprised that had even occurred. Um, it was due to some conversation that had originally taken place in financial management. Um, from what I understand, Finance Director Burke had, uh, uh, I guess, gotten confused about a, a general statement that was made about how those types of projects we need to make sure come through um, you know, any bids or anything like that goes through financial management, of course, but uh, any bids or any solicitations for bids uh, for buildings to actually come through building and grounds to have those be, uh, you know, kind of check marked off um, on uh, even maybe up to the point now that we have uh, shawls and shanks that we send them to them uh, and, and utilize them for, uh, uh, well, utilize them even more than what we have. Um, with that, uh, Finance Director Burke uh, had contacted us, had contacted uh, Chairman Bailey, and had stated that uh, this project needed to go through building and grounds to be approved um, or to sign off on, I guess, that we were okay with them expending that, those monies. Um, and I, of course, stepped down at the time, made the motion, or uh, somebody made the motion. I, I thought it was me. Um, we made the motion. We moved forward. That passed. And uh, shortly after, I contacted uh, Director Burke and informed him that, you know, I think that it was just a misunderstanding. Uh, some words got, we got kind of turned around in some words and some language there uh, that I think we were talking about more stepping forward than we were previous projects and that uh, they needed to be able to get on that uh, immediately. And that was for the uh, addition to the building uh, on one of the sides, on one of the bay doors, so that they had a location to store cardboard. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of related to the, uh, the piece of equipment that was ordered. However, it's more of the storage of that cardboard because my understanding is that at, at one point they're having to actually take cardboard 
and set that outside and store that. And of course, we all know that that, uh, you know, it rains, it gets muddy, it gets wet. Uh, that decreases the uh, how much they can actually uh, uh, get out of that cardboard whenever they resell that. And, uh, you know, that was also, I believe, a concern that the city of Elizabethan had was allowing all that cardboard to sit there, uh, it being sort of a, a potential to be a hazard as well as uh, just a, an eyesore in general. So, uh, you know, like I said, that money, those monies were released. That purchase order was, was issued uh, and they were able to, you know, move forward with that at their will. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair Dreyfus. The last item I have, uh, Madam Chairperson, is uh, in the, uh, I believe it's in the old business item K. It, it's topic is Northeast State Contract Lease Proposal, but the very bottom before we took a break, there was an item of very importance that we needed to clarify, and I didn't know if it had been done during the month, and that concerns the roof on the buildings up there that had been reported uh, leaking and then it was verified that the roofs had uh, been replaced in year 2014 with a 15 year warranty. If there was a leak or it wasn't a leak or if anything had been done as far as action, I know. I cannot speak to that, sir, I'm sorry. Can anybody in the group speak to that? Did, did I understand that to be the uh, the issue of whether or not there is or isn't a leak or has or has been a leak in the uh, the workforce development complex? Is, is that what I understood? Yeah, that's it because of the complaint that came in and that is a rather new roof. And it's a, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it's a single membrane roof that has a good quality uh, warranty on the thing. If we got a leak, let's get it fixed because it's covered. I just want to know if it's been verified like it was stated that it probably would be during the month. I just want to see if it's taking place. Uh, Brad? Yeah. Ron and Roy said there's there's uh, not a leak. They did have a leak over near the end of the building that's not being used by Northeast State. It's actually where the welding bays are. And it is where we had all the rain and the wind that actually blew some of that up. Um, and yeah. so they were able to fix that. But there's, we've not been able to verify any leaks at this point. And I did have Ron and Roy check into that. All right. Thank you, Madam I Chairman. You, I didn't hear your first part of that. Okay. Question. okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. No further. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Anyone else? All right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn, Randall. Okay. Um, let's just let's just consider this meeting adjourned and let one of the other chairs have the floor. Hey, Dr. Um, Aka, you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've sorry. got a guest for health and welfare. So if it's okay with everybody, we'll go next. Dr. Uh, Acuff, it's yes, Kelly Holmes, eighth district. Um I was going to say, uh, Mr. Johnson, I think that the building that you're referring to is going to be here the May 26th or arrived, parked or whatever, and they said it would take around a week to get it put up since it doesn't actually have sides. Um, that was in the meeting um, night before last or last night or whenever. Um, I think that's what you were referring to. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Collins. Anything else, Kelly? No, thank you. I, I just thought I'd throw that in. I couldn't get unmuted fast enough before That's you were okay. That's okay. Uh, thank uh, you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. We'll call Health and Welfare uh, to order at 8.04. We'll operate off the roll call vote uh, for building and grounds. Um, the uh, next item on the agenda is to approve the agenda, so I'll take a motion uh, to do so. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Is there a second? Second, second Commissioner Holdren. Thank you. Any discussion about the agenda and additions? Hearing none, Gwen, if you'll call the roll, please, to approve the agenda. Robert Acuff? 
Yes. Mike Hill. Yes. Brad Johnson. Yeah. Austin James. Yes. Ginger Holdren. Yes. Randall Jenkins. Yes. Daniel McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Next item is public comment. I think we have a few people on, but uh, I'll wait to hear a voice or see a hand if anyone in the public would like to address health and welfare. Okay. Seeing none, we'll end public comment and move to item five, which is approve the March 2021 minutes. Uh, you'll notice this, the minutes that I sent out actually say February, but they are March, so that's one correction that will be uh, need to be made um, going forward. So is there a motion to approve the March 2021 minutes? Motion to approve is amended. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Is there a second? Second, Thomas Prophet. Thank you, sir. Um, any other discussion about uh, minutes or corrections other than one that has been noted? Hearing none, Gwen, would you please call the roll for the approval of the March 2021 minutes? Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yeah. As, um, Austin James? Yes. Ginger Holdren? Yes. Randall Jenkins? Yes. Daniel McIntyre? Yes. Thomas Prophet? Yes. Thank you. It's all, it's unanimous. Uh, item number six uh, is our guest for health and welfare tonight concerning the Americana Steakhouse. And I'll let Commissioner Hill introduce our guest. Chairman, um, Acuff, before you get there, if you don't mind. Um, I was going to see if, uh, since uh, Commissioner Strynstaff's on here, if he wants to take back over his committee, since he's a little more relevant with what's going on. I, I, sorry, I, I apologize. I couldn't get back to, to unmute myself. I, I lost everything. Uh, no, if it's if it's okay with the rest of the committee, um, I'm actually going to, uh, to step off. Like I said, my original... Uh, my original purpose was to step on and, and like I said, apologize for the, the lateness of the document. Uh, I believe I have accomplished that statement and uh, uh, was able to even answer a few questions while I was on. And uh, I'll uh, step down at this point and uh, Austin, if you'll just continue on for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, no problem. Just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you. So, uh, Commissioner Hill. Uh, thank you, Dr. Acuff. Well, I just, with our ongoing research into food insecurity and the homelessness issue and the Borgening Carter Compassion Center that is, uh, that is being developed, uh, we have a gentleman who is establishing, in the process of establishing a, a restaurant in Roan Mountain, my district, District 2, uh, who is modeling that on um, a nonprofit approach that, um, I'll let him talk about, but it's it's really um, interesting and and um, inspirational and a, a nice example of how the private sector and business can hopefully possibly engage in this good work that this committee is doing. So at this time, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Troy Bone. Uh, Troy, I'm, I appreciate your patience and, and thanks for hanging in there and, and watching Carter County government in action. Um, and I'll just turn it over to you, sir. Well, <clears throat> thanks for having me. Um, I was able to meet with Commissioner Hill this past week and just sort of share with him what we're planning on doing. But we are, because of COVID-19, it slowed down our construction for the, the restaurant itself. But this summer, we will open Americano Steakhouse in Road Mountain, um, which will, for that area, will actually be a fine dining uh, restaurant open Monday through Saturday from five to nine for dinner. But the restaurant itself has a higher calling where we're going to bring the focus to a food pantry that I've created called Fight Hunger. We right now have uh, an office in Avery County. We're also looking to do something in Carter County as well, where I've partnered with an organization called Miss Pumpkins. Miss Pumpkins is a, a business in Winston-Salem that 
creates chef prepared meals. And we have delivered these meals to families in Carter County and Avery County since um, November of last year. So we can't uh, provide a full month's worth of food like a Feeding Avery Families does or something like that. Um, but we've been able to supplement people with gourmet meals that are healthy, nutritious, that are fully prepared. They take these frozen gourmet meals and put them inside the oven and bake them for say 45 minutes or so and then pull it out and they've got themselves a nutritious meal for a family of four. Mm. Um, and we've been able to take these meals to people that have either food insecurities, um, sometimes it's an elderly person where their wife has gone to the hospital for lung cancer or something like that. Um, so food insecurity doesn't necessarily mean that someone's homeless or in poverty at all the time, um, even though we've been able to help people in, in, in both cases. So um, the restaurant that will open, um, we just feel blessed to be able to do so. My parents live in Roan Mountain. I believe in Roan Mountain. I love Roan Mountain. I think it's got a great uh, business opportunity. The cars I count going down 19 East blows my mind. So we will open that um, this summer and that will be able to bring focus to our fight hunger thing. So you can feel free to ask questions. We would love to find a space maybe in downtown Elizabethton where we could have a uh, foods retail store for a Miss Pumpkins fight hunger. And what that would look like is you've probably been into like a honey baked hams or something like that. I just need a 500 square foot uh, retail store where we could offer these frozen gourmet meals for people to purchase. And the model for the fight hunger program is it sort of self funds itself. If you buy a chicken pot pie, we then in turn donated pot pie, like sort of like the Bombas socks does for people um, or Tom shoes. So it becomes a self-funding mechanism. I have the franchise rights to expand Miss Pumpkins, which has been in business for 35 years in Winston-Salem. And they do a lot of uh, fundraising opportunities with their pot pies, sort of like the Krispy Kreme donut thing. And they donate that money back. So what we've decided to do is sell the pot pies, the chicken parmesan, the meatloaf, the apple pies, the mashed potatoes, the sliced carrots, whatever it might be. For example, a chicken pot pie would cost you $6.00 that chicken pot pie feeds four people. So if you come in and buy a chicken pot pie, we then in turn donate a pot pie, or you could buy a package or a kit to feed a family of four for um, either one night or support a family that you don't know for a week. Um, and it has been proven when you let the community sort of help do those things, they will sort of step up and do it. So I don't need a huge space, um, but I would like to have a space where there's some walking traffic um, not just a drive up destination for a location somewhere in Elizabethton, which would be more better suited for a Miss Pumpkins storefront. So that's sort of the story. Yeah. Sounds like a great concept. And uh, as we move through and talk about homeless task force update in a few minutes here, um, I'd like to have you a part of the, even though you're not a nonprofit necessarily. Uh, well, let me check. So I have, so I've got several different companies. I've founded Fight Hunger itself is actually a nonprofit. Nonprofit. Well, yeah, and, and then the restaurant itself will be a for-profit. Right. Where I'll be able to, we actually have a, an agreement to donate a hefty amount of our proceeds to actually the nonprofit. And as we're up and going and operating, we'll share that. There's a, a gentleman, um, that has some restaurants in Charlotte that I've sort of modeled this after, you know, so, but we do have a nonprofit, which is actually Fight Hunger. It's a North Carolina based company. Okay. Well, when we meet with the nonprofits either later this month or the first of next month, I would like to extend to you an invitation to join that group to talk about these very things. Um, the Carter County or Carter Compassion Center is an opportunity for a whole bunch of nonprofits to come under one umbrella uh, it's sort of like a one-stop shopping for all those who are in need. So right. that they don't have to, they don't need to go to, to uh, a, a pantry and then try to look for, call somebody for housing and then try to look for clothes for their kids. We want to bring all those types together. So when they come to us, they can cut a lot of time and um, 
travel around Carter County by talking or have access to all those nonprofits. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So I know uh, Mike has my contact or, or if he has your contact information, he can shoot it to me and I'll make sure he that you're included in, in, in that discussion. I will make sure you guys are looped in. Okay, great. Uh, Dr. Acuff. Yes. Uh, I think Commissioner Hill, you're on here too, aren't you? Sorry, what? I said, uh, Chairman Hill, I'm sorry, Travis, not, oh. not Mike. <laughs> He was on here earlier. I don't. I see him logged in, but I don't know if he's there. Um, I, I was trying to confer with him to make sure. I'm thinking for, we have our first budget hearing meeting this coming Monday. Um, I'll try to refer back to the budget schedule. Um, but I think the first one, of course, is the nonprofit. Uh, Austin, I believe that is correct. It's after the normal budget meeting. Yeah. Um, so uh, that, that'll be coming up here in the short little bit. Um, I think everything was supposed to be submitted, but um, this is kind of one of those different scenarios. Um, so uh, if Chairman or Commissioner Mike Hill or Commissioner Oka, if you don't care if y'all would, would reach out to either um, Brad or uh, um, Michael and see what we need to do to try to get him added. I don't care as chair if we need to go back and adjust the list to make sure to put them on there. So. I don't think you understand. Mr. Bone's not asking for a, a handout from the county. Mr. Bone is asking to support this initiative that the county is launching uh, from the private sector. Uh, was he not, uh, uh, Commissioner Acuff, was he not talking about that they had a nonprofit that they run this through also? Yeah, they do have a nonprofit. And Troy, you, you can explain how that, how that works better than we, I can. We've basically sort of self-funded it ourselves um, for the last six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I, what the nonprofits, what you're needing the retail space for, is that right, or is it the Miss? Um... Yes, well, yeah, we would love to have uh, Miss Pumpkin's Fight Hunger retail space somewhere in Carter County if someone, you know, had a, a, a good lease deal or something like that. You know, we're also well, I was talking about uh, yeah. Commissioner Hill is, is it that we, we maybe could put him on the not the outside agencies if they found the space and maybe we could fund the lease rate through that instead of because we're we clearly don't have a space as a county. So yeah. yeah so that that would be appropriate. I don't mind reaching out to Kennedy and get a packet and Troy get it to you if you want to enter into that uh, nonprofit space uh, because we fund a number of nonprofits in the, in the county, at least it might be able to, to provide um, enough money for, to, to lease until we could find you something better. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll do that. Thanks for coming on. Great, uh, great discussion. Thank you, thank glad, you all glad, for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Troy. Yeah. Thanks, glad buddy. you're going to be in uh, Carter County. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Chairman Acuff, may I yes. speak before he yes. leaves us? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Bone, I just wanted to say welcome to the area and ask if you have reached out to Joy McRae, our Chamber of Commerce director, to see if she's aware of a space that you could lease. I have not yet at this time, no ma'am. Okay, she is a wonderful resource for things like that. She might know of something because she's right downtown and she hears all the talk. And we do have some space that potentially could be leased, you know, or donated, however it would come about, from the county. We've, we've got some things that we've got to decide how to use. And so it's not out of the question, I don't suppose. Uh, right. But again, thank you for what you're doing and welcome. We're, we're so glad to have you. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Thanks again. We appreciate you being here. Um, item number seven is uh, broadband internet update. Um, I reached out to Brad Shields at uh, Ridgelink. Uh, he has been in touch with Ivy, uh, Crystal Ivy in the governor's office and more than likely uh, funds will be available towards the end of the summer for broad, rural broadband. They don't know how much money that's gonna be. I know the federal government's investing, the state of Tennessee is investing. So, um, and until they know how that structure is gonna be and how much money they're gonna get, 
uh, we're still in the holding pattern for any grant writing uh, that would go to fund that, uh, those initiatives in Carter County. I would ask, since we're starting into the budget period, that uh, someone make a motion to roll forward for the next budget year, the $600,000 that we ask budget to reserve to help match uh, the utility entities that would possibly partner with Ridgelink and actually run the fiber to individual homes um, so that we, we can offer up some monies to them. Um, uh, to become partners with us. And as Brad has indicated, it looks like it's going to be SkyBest. Uh, we've mentioned that name a number of times. They're already in Johnson County. They've already done a number of initiatives with the state of Tennessee. So they are uh, considering uh, looking at Carter County closely and they would be the individuals that um, Ridgelink would help write the grant to apply for the funding for us. Chairman Aiko. Yes, sir. I, I would like to place in the motion that we uh, uh, go to the budget to move for the 600000 for the reserve fund for our broadband project. Okay. Thank you, I'll sir. Second. Second from uh, Commissioner Holdren. Any other discussion on this item before I ask Gwen to step in? Thank you. Gwen, will you please call the roll on asking the budget committee to roll forward the $600,000 uh, to be used for broadband, um, hopefully in this coming year. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yes. Austin James? Yes. Ginger Holdren? Yes. Randall Jenkins? Yes. Daniel McInturf? Yes. Thomas Prophet? Yes. Thank you. That was unanimous. Uh, we'll send that forward uh, to budget. Um, Chairman Acuff? Yes. Hey, I was going to mention, I, I do know that in the federal money, I believe one of the one of the line items or one of the stipulations, it can be used for broadband. So maybe maybe we can hold on to our 600,000 in that reserve account if we can use that towards some of our broadband um, um, infrastructure or whatever we need. Okay, that's, that's a good idea. Um, I can I'll alert uh, Mr. Shields to that and in his discussions with uh, SkyBest, uh, they can take that into consideration because as you know, it will be that entity, the utility entity that will write the grant. So, but thank you for that. That's good information to have and I'll pass it along to, to uh, Ridgeland. Uh, item set, uh, eight is homeless task force update. Um, I did send out to each of you uh, along with the minutes, our Carter Compassion Center bylaws. I don't know if Attorney Harden is still on the line, but I wanna thank him for sitting down with uh, Brandon Young, myself and Mike Simmerly to draw those up um, so that we can have a entity uh, that would actually bring together, as I was describing to Troy, underneath one um, roof, a number of nonprofits to help uh, our folks in, in need. Uh, Josh did complete that. The bylaws, uh, once we get a um, IRS EIN, uh, have to be registered in the Register of Deeds office and then we can then establish a bank account. I think I reported last time that at the pastor's meeting at Valley Forge Free Will Baptist, um, Brandon had a number of pastors come up, uh, hand him checks, uh, ask uh, if they could uh, provide or write them into their budget for a monthly contribution. So it looks like we have found several sources of, of funding. Uh, I think he collected uh, over $1,000 that night and has have had others contact him to see how they can get the, um, um, their congregations can be included in the giving process. So we'll be establishing a Carter, a, a Carter um, Compassion Center bank account. Um, uh, so those funds could be deposited in. And then our next meeting, as I indicated, will be either later this month or first of May 
to reach out to all the nonprofits that operate uh, in Carter County and surrounding areas um, to come together um, and hear the same uh, presentation and sl see the slideshow that Brandon has put together about uh, Carter Compassion Center. So you have a copy of those bylaws and I appreciate um, Brandon uh, stepping up to be the president of the organization and Mike similarly is vice president. I'm gonna be serving at least for the interim as treasurer. And we have, I know that um, Thomas Prophet is gonna be on our board and we have a few others, a couple of others uh, and a, a couple of pastors and interested individuals who want to, to be involved in, in, in this particular project. So um, we've seen fruit from the homeless task force and um, I think we're all excited about seeing it move together for the betterment of helping those uh, particularly those who are the least of us uh, in Carter County. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer um, any questions that you might have. Okay. Hearing none, uh, I don't believe there is any old or new business unless someone has something to bring before the committee. Seeing no hands raised or no voices indicating otherwise. Um, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved, District 2. Mike. Thank you, Commissioner Hill. Is there a second? I'll second, Randall. Okay. Any uh, opposition? If not, we are adjourned. <laughs> Mike, Thank you. you want me to go ahead, sir? I have no agenda tonight, Randall. It's all up to you. It's, it's, it's all yours. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Well, I, I will apologize to is um, for my agenda coming out late. Uh, there's, uh, you know, it just is what it is. I'm, I'm human. I make a mistake. So uh, I'll do better next month. Um, moving on. So roll call is the same uh, approval of agenda. Before we do that, I need to add uh, under technically under old business. Uh, we need to revisit the holiday, the county holiday list. So with that being added, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve as amended. Got it. In a second. Second, ACUF. Any discussion? Gwen, do you mind calling a roll, please? Randall Jenkins. Yes. Randall McIntyre. Yes. Thomas Prophet. Yes. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yes. Isaiah Grunstaff? Or, I'm sorry, Austin Janes? Yes. All right. And Ginger Holden? Oh. Yes. Sorry, Ginger. I was about to leave you out. Sorry. Um, all right. So, public comments. Uh, do we have any public on? I don't see any. Any public comments going once, going twice. All right. Was I muted? Yes. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So uh, moving on, uh, the new policy for count, county employees, the, the social media policy. We had a we've had a month to to chew it over. What do you guys think? And we want to proceed with it, move forward, throw it away. What's up? Any thoughts? Well. I did some checking um, with other municipalities and um, throughout the region. And uh, I do know uh, that Elizabethan has one. I haven't received a copy yet, but uh, Bristol, Tennessee also has a policy, but it's only a page in length. Uh, ours is four pages, which I think is, a qu is quite cumbersome. 
Um, I would also like to remind folks um, that um, First Amendment rights does apply to government and employers. Uh, it does not apply to private sector employers. Private sector employers can dictate what their employees will do. That's why at the federal level, there's a whistleblower law and a number of legal protections also exist under civil, civil service rules. So I think um, we need to think long and hard before we go down this path. Um, there is an attorney in Nashville that makes his living um, off of uh, individuals, uh, particularly municipalities and other government entities when they have wrongly dismissed an employee for posting something that might have been considered um, a, a slam against a commission member or uh, a mayor or, or whatever. Um, uh, so I would just like to um, tell you that I think it's protected activity. I wish Josh was on to speak more to this issue, uh, but I have no problem in passing something that says no uh, government employee can speak for Carter County uh, or have a voice in, in uh, representing the county unless they've been given that, that privilege uh, by the mayor or empowered by the, by the commission to do so. So. Commissioner Jenkins. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Ike, or Commissioner Ike have said something about uh, Attorney Harden. I think he's on, so if he'd like to ask him a question about that. Josh, you have any comment on uh, how First Amendment issues relate to to uh, governments versus private sector employees or employers? Sure, I, I think I talked about this some last month, and I, I talked about it again in the context of uh, uh, drug testing, drug free workplace that came up once before. It may have been before this commission's time. Some of you were certainly privy to that, but uh, the county government in itself is is a branch of the government, and so rules that don't apply to private businesses uh, uh, will apply to the government. So uh, the the government restricting free speech uh, is a problem, uh, just as in the example I think I used before. If I didn't, I'll use it again. Was the the, the drug free workplace? Uh, issue that came up with requiring uh, random drug testing, uh, I advised against doing that because uh, a, a, a forced uh, procurement of, of bodily fluids from someone is a search and the government can't search without a warrant. Uh, so rules that, uh, you know, Walmart or Burger King or whoever uh, can, can subject their employees to random drug testing all day long, every day. If that's what they feel like they want to do, we cannot. Uh, this is another area uh, where our restricting uh, speech uh, would be viewed differently than a private company restricting speech. And I did, uh, when, I, when I put this together last month, I you know, looked at lots of other policies, cities and counties across the state, the actual state of Tennessee, the city of Bristol, uh, Carter County Edu Board of Education policy, um, Lots, lots of different, uh, Knox County, I think I looked at. Uh, so, I mean, this is a, 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 a kind of a borrowing from all of those. I didn't, you know, a lot of this isn't just something I came up with. Uh, the, these are, you know, policies that exist other places. Well, obviously the most concerning part of it to me or the most uh, questionable, shaky part of it to me would be restricting off-duty speech uh, you know, by someone who happens to be employed by Carter County that makes some sort of statement on social media, you know, criticizing, uh, you know, a commissioner or, or their, their boss who happens to be a, an elected official, you know, th those would be the, the shakiest parts of it. Certainly, I think we can restrict uh, speech during working hours when we're paying someone. We can restrict speech on government sites and pages. Um, but when you get into trying to control or limit speech, uh, someone's non-working hours 
um, you know, who, who are expressing an opinion about a public figure, uh, such as an elected official, such as all of you all, or an office holder, those would be um, the troublesome areas. And certainly no policy is perfect and, and you know, no policy uh, will, will be looked at uh, uh, generically. It will be applied to a specific set of facts in every circumstance. And if a specific employee is disciplined or fired, uh, then their specific set of facts and their specific behavior uh, will be weighed against the policy to determine if it infringes on their rights to enforce. And so uh, I, I can in no way would I give a blanket uh, you know, statement that, that we can freely restrict uh, an employee's speech off duty. And that's not what I was uh, trying to get at in this, but certainly parts of it are, you know, could be on, on the borderline of that if, if they were enforced uh, based on a specific set of facts that were unwarranted. Uh, so I, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, overly uh, lawyery with it, uh, to, uh, for lack of a better word, but it, it's definitely not perfect. And I, you know, I will, it was intended as a draft and I'm happy to uh, work with it, work with you all, uh, talk, to, talk to smarter people than me uh, to uh, make it better. Thank you, Josh. So, <clears throat> go I ahead. A question for the county attorney, and it's just simply a question because I don't know the answer. So, in regards to the Facebook pages that are ran by the different government entities, we have several, there are several, um, which are all entities that are fund that the government, the county government funds. Who is responsible for controlling any actions or any verbiage that is used on those pages as far as comments or any, any type of slander that may be put there? If Carter County is the funding entity of that government body, who is responsible for controlling representation of those pages? I, and I don't know the answer. I, I'm just curious. As I know we have ours for Carter County and I control it and I oversight it and we make sure that no comments are allowed on the, that page. It's just a, for informational purposes only. Um, and so I'm just curious as to how that oversight works as far as the, the social media pages. Uh, well, as, as usual, uh, it's, it's a little bit different with the county because we have different elected office holders uh, who certainly have the right to establish a, a website or a Facebook page for their office, even though they're our division of the government. Um, and I don't think, uh, for instance, the mayor can control what the Register of Deeds puts on a website uh, or the sheriff puts on a website. I think each of those office holders are elected and they, they are autonomous in their office and they are the gatekeepers and uh, of the information from their office. And the, the department head or the elected official should be controlling what information is put on the website, what allow, what you know comments are allowed on the website. Uh, but, you know, uh, let's just be honest that this whole issue uh, stems from one thing and, and the, the issue is, uh, can you control what a uh, county employee uh, posts or makes a comment on a website or a Facebook page associated with the county if they're not working or if they're at home on their own time? Uh, are they allowed to make a comment, a critical comment uh, of a commissioner or, or their boss as the elected office holder or, or not? And that's, you know, that's where... Uh, uh, where the trouble could come in. And that's where folks like Dr. Acuff were referencing make their living. Uh, you know, we, we can't, especially folks in the public uh, uh, sphere, pu public figures who are, are subject to a uh, um, public scrutiny. Uh, and just because uh, they may criticize something that was done or some vote that was taken, that's not slander, it's not actionable as slander. Uh, but that, you know, any, any individual commissioner could take action against that if they felt like it was warranted. But the trouble is going to come in if we restrict 
free speech of employees during non-employee working hours. Um, private companies can do that. I think we are much, uh, we're on much shakier ground to do that. And that's, that's just my opinion. As you all know, I try to be conservative in my opinion um, and I don't wanna overreach. And I'm the last person who would want, uh, you know, over intrusive government regulation of anything because uh, that, that kind of goes against everything I'm for. But my personal opinion doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you all decide is what I will do. And I will try to give you the best advice I can. But uh, I, I do agree that we need to have a policy, at least for the county, as far as control of the pages and what's done on working time and what information is allowed uh, on government sanctioned sites. Um, and to the extent that we can control individual office holder sites, I would hope that they would adhere to that as well. You know, we don't need a back and forth uh, uh, soapbox for negative comments on government sites. It's, it's to relay information. That's what they're for. Uh, with the animal shelter in particular, I mean, that, that is a useful tool to, uh, you know, advertise about pets for adoption or lost pets or pets that have been turned in. And that's what it's for. But I, I don't, you know, the comments and the dialogue about different things um, should be irrelevant and not part of that, frankly. It should be restricted to the purpose of uh, helping the animals and, and, you know, animals that are up for adoption, animals that have been found and, and, and in a way that people actually look at because nobody, you know, looks at a newspaper or, or watches the news anymore, hardly that everybody looks at Facebook. So it's a very useful tool, but it needs to be a tool for that, to, to, to get out information, not to provide a platform for every crazy person who, who feels like they've got an ax to grind to get out and say something. I, I agree with you, Josh. And I, I just also wanted to say, I, I mean, and I know some of our Facebook page or social media sites are are ran by directors who have a committee that oversights them. Would it be the committee's responsibility to make sure that the page is being ran correctly and, and it's being used for informational purposes only or the director the over, of, the, of the office? Yeah, in my opinion, it would, it would be the, the committee. It would be the, the, the ultimate authority over that office, uh, which in most cases is an elected official, but in some cases it's a committee. Uh, and they control the operation and and supervise the the director. So yes, I think those committees should be in charge of policing the 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 website or social media page for that department. Thank you. I just wanted to get clarification on a lot of that. That was just insight for myself. And also, I just wanted to say that people need to remember that when people are looking for Carter County, they are looking at some of these pages to get insight on our county. And going on some of these pages and seeing some of this negative negativity about our elected officials or whatever it may be at the time or whatever the topic is, it's just in a bad light on Carter County as a whole. Um, and I just really would think there needs to be a little bit more oversight on that. Um, and I think the animal shelter page is used for great things. I, I look on there all the time for adoptions and lost pets and, and it's been successful in locating a lot of pets. And I, I think that's a great tool for that. Um, I just, I don't think it's a great tool for using as a platform to, um, for a topic just to be hurtful or, or disrespect anybody. I know we, we all can't get along in the grand scheme of things, but I would like to see Carter County thrive in a better light as far as social media. And that's just, that's all I had to say. And, and thank you. Chairman Jenkins. Sir, got the floor. I got a couple of points. Number one, who controls what is appropriate and not appropriate for Facebook? And that answer is Mark Zuckerberg. Um, that's the beginning and end of it. He's one of the few tech giants who's still in, in control of his own company. And as we all know, many things do not violate their alleged company standards or community standards that probably are, are not palatable for most of us. Um, the second point I would make is that this commission voted unanimously to adopt the resolution naming Carter County as a sanctuary for the uh, American Constitution. Um, something's cutting in, I'm sorry, I don't think that's me. Uh, we voted unanimously as commissioners to uh, adopt the, uh, 
the constitutional sanctuary resolution uh, to do anything that would restrict free speech would make any one of us who voted in the affirmative on that matter a hypocrite. I will not enjoy many things that you guys have to say about me personally. I will fight to my last breath for you guys to have the right to say those things. Uh, I expect the same, you know, courtesy in return. That is the nature of American freedom. This is a garbage resolution. It should have been dead on arrival and it should never have been presented back to this committee. Your vote, if you choose to take one, is whether Carter County departments will officially have Facebook pages or whether that will not be a policy. Whether we, the policy would be whether we allow government agencies to have a Facebook page or not. Um, if we don't like what's out there on Facebook, that's out of our control. Um, I think, frankly, many people need to act better if they want to be represented better in the community. But uh, if we're going to vote on some county policy, it needs to be whether we should have any county Facebook pages at all or not. We do have a county website. Thank you for the floor. I yield back. Thank you, Mike. So I have to I have to follow up with a question. So as if we're just looking at this from an employer employee you know stance and that we're trying to control what happens while we're on the clock and on the county's facebook page i don't think that has anything to do with what facebook decides is right or not right and i might be wrong on that mike or we just might disagree uh and i'm for one <clears throat> for less government for less government control you know, ask anybody. I'm willing to take the commission down to a far less number than what it is right now. I, this is just more of an employee-employer policy in my eyes. Now, we can change it down to to where it just, you know, where we are, for one, protecting ourselves as the employer, and for two, controlling what is put on counties, uh social media pages i mean but now after hours i'm i'm totally in agreement with you guys we cannot i mean at, at a, a private business i can't control what people say well in in a way of their job or not and but i understand this is government and that's not what i'm aiming to do with this um i mean y'all can take it however you want but I mean, we can revise this make it a working document, go at it like adults, you know, figure out a, a document that works and go with it. Um, but I'll open the floor back up. Chairman Jenkins. Yes, ma'am. Just, uh, I don't know, you all can treat it as a rhetorical question or Attorney Harden can actually answer it, but when would you define a commissioner as being off duty? Uh, I think that we are on duty 24 seven. Um, and I think that our EMA director was pretty much on duty 24 seven. Uh, I think our shelter director at times has gone out in the middle of the night to retrieve a wounded animal or whatever. I, I don't know exactly how the on and off duty applies here because many of us work after hours as needed by the public or whomever. I'll stop and, and let you all speak. I'm sorry. Ginger Holdren for the win. <laughs> well, uh, if, if you were directing that, some of that, me, I would just clarify. Certainly, this doesn't apply to you all as county commissioners. This is a policy that you all would all adopt right. as, a, as an employment policy for the employees of the county. Uh, you know, it wouldn't apply to you all. Uh, I think a much more conservative approach, in my opinion, would be to have a policy that. Um, clearly defines that, you know, what can happen during working hours on an official website of the county, on an official page 
managed by the county or county office holder and just clarify that the office holders are the gatekeepers of their own pages. The county mayor is the gatekeeper of the county website and maybe the official county Facebook page. Uh, and that, you know, our policy is that uh, comments uh, should be uh, deactivated or however you do that on there. So people can't get into random uh, uh, debates about uh, things that are irrelevant uh, to getting out the information the websites are intended to get out. You know, something simple as that rather than, you know, getting into uh, potential uh, discipline or termination for off duty, uh, you know, uh, work from whatever employee it is, uh, whether it's an hourly employee or a salaried employee, you know, and yes, there may be situations where um, it's hard to define when they're working and when they're not working. Uh, but I, I think a more uh, straightforward approach would just be, um, no comments on official county pages other than, you know, here, here's Rover. We found him out by the school. Uh, if he's yours, come and get him. Other than that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be getting into uh, diatribes about uh, policy or, or uh, anything like that on the, on the official county pages. They should be for just getting out information. Josh, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, so on that, if we went that way, committee what would be wrong with that what's your thoughts on going that direction Randall I don't see no issues going that direction I'll be very intrigued to be able to, if attorney Harden has a copy of it and can kind of uh, give us an idea I, maybe even what the city's doing on theirs uh, maybe give a little better idea Go ahead, Mike. I see you. <laughs> so um, in all this county jobs that we've been creating, then are we going to create the Carter County Politburo to, to, to monitor the, the various county departmental Facebook pages then? Who, who enforces this? It would just be the, uh, the department heads from what I understand. Good. Sounds like nothing would change much to me. Or we could just do away with all the county social media sites. I mean, I, either way, I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> Zero tolerance would be no county web pages or no county Facebook pages and all information de being disseminated by the, the one portal, which would be cartercountytennessee.gov. If, if you want to instate a policy, otherwise you're going to be like, we're going to be coming back month after month Who's going to enforce it? And are, are we going to have arbitrage? Uh, who, who's going to be the panel that arbitrates the, uh, the Facebook violations? I mean, it'll go on forever. I, I love Facebook, and I do think that it's a great way to get information out there. I probably see lost animals on Facebook more often than I would on a website. But with all that being said, I have been searching for a dog for my daughter for at least three weeks now. And when you're desperate for something, you will go wherever you need to go. So I have been utilizing websites as often as Facebook these last three weeks for that purpose. I would be a proponent of us doing away with all government Facebook and other social media pages and just utilizing uh, websites, uh, the county website, an official page instead, um, because it is for the purpose of information dissemination, and that would accomplish that goal if people are really concerned about when a meeting is, when an event is, you know, what animals have been found, they'll go there because they want that information. I couldn't agree with uh, Commissioner Holdren's statement even more. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So on that note, uh, the next line on my agenda um, would be um, live streaming our meetings. So that might hamper that in a way. I don't know. Uh, somebody with more knowledge in that field 
could let me know. Uh, not getting too far down the agenda, staying on current subject if we decide to go that route. But I'm all I'm, I'm opening the floor for options because <clears throat> we're beating it to death. It's getting late, and I'm getting impatient with it. So let's make a decision and and move on. If we're going to squash it, squash it. If not, we're going to need to make a motion from the floor to move on with a different direction. As Josh spoke earlier, I mean, it's your all's will. We can kick the can around all night long. Let's take some action. Chairman. Sir. It is a double-edged sword from the word go. And, and yeah, you know, the question becomes a philosophical one. Is it more of a, a, a useful tool or is it something that, you know, is, is going to blow up in our faces? I, I think that the question is whether you allow them to exist or not. Um, I think the genie's already out of the bottle. I don't think you can enforce anything that you would pass tonight. And um, anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now, but it's, uh, there, there's not much, I don't think that, that we can do that would make a, a, a dent. Well, Kellen from Josh, he still, we still need to put a policy in place, no matter if it's watered down or whatever, I don't care. I'd like to do what he says. So somebody with a motion, please hit the floor. Or I will step down, whoever my vice chair is. But what would that solve? He can make a motion. <laughs> let, let Are me you say, the vice chair, Johnson? I have no idea. I no, I'm on, no, I'm on law enforcement. I'm vice chair of there. Oh. Okay. It's fine. Jeez. What was you going to say, Josh? Red, yeah, let me say, I don't, I don't want to come off as saying that we need, that we need to do the policy here. Or I'm trying to encourage y'all to pass a policy. I was just saying, yeah, if you would, are going to pass one, uh, I, I would make it a, a little more conservative to restricting uh, employee activity while they are at work and, and what can be disseminated on an official county sanction page slash website. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Don't, don't, don't feel like I'm trying to force you all to say we need a policy or you should have a policy. Chairman, I move that we take no action on this and bury it. I have a motion on the floor. I have a second. I'll second it. ACUF, First District. Any discussion? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, sure, Randall. I don't want to see it squashed. They have to, that, I think there should be something done because it's caught out of hand. You know, um, there's employees that they have violated insubordination to the even to the face of this commission, and we've sat on our backside. And that and that the biggest part of it comes through social media that is paid for by the government and by this county's taxpayers' dollars. Now, I mean, all it does is show the Larry Darrells and Darrells and the Ernest T. Basses of our county, but they're using our funds to do it. No further, thank you. Any other discussion? Wing, will you call the roll, please? Take the motion, yes or no, what it represents. Mike, repeat your motion. Uh, no action on this topic and bury it. Yes, a yes vote means a no. Is that what you're saying? Yes would be no action and, and kill it. Okay, thank you. Randall Jenkins? Nope. Daniel McInturf? No. Thomas Prophet? No. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Of course. Brad Johnson? No. Austin James? No. Ginger Holdren? No. 
Six no and two yes. Motion fails. Is the floor open for another motion? Or do I can suggest that we send it back to the county attorney and get a, another revised copy and revisit it next month. Is that your all's will? Mr. Chairman, I place a motion that we defer it to next month for further thought process and discussion. Would you like the county attorney to, to revise what we've wrote so far? Well, he can. I mean, he, he could have been in there to start with, but he's got some revisions that'll help. Let it rip. <laughs> Let it rip. <laughs> yes, I'll second that motion. Ah, all right. We need discussion. We have a, a, a motion and a second. <laughs> yeah, 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 Randall. I, I'm yes, such, a, such a sanctuary for the, the, the First Amendment we are. Well. well, I mean, it gets so bad. Now, think about it. We just went through an era last year in criminal court for, what was it, killing of three or four that was use of social media. Now, I don't want to be a proponent of that using taxpayers' dollar to force, I mean, to that be involved in something like that. It's nothing to be funny about, uh, you know. I don't you disagree. Enjoy? I mean, Johnson County had to make Dateline because people were murdered, killed through social media. I mean, it, it's dangerous. It's definitely right. dangerous. Yeah. I mean, so eliminate all social media pages with any kind of affiliation to Carter County government and call that a day. It's, it's very simple. Go to zero tolerance. I mean, this wishing and washing is, is no good, but the commission made a unanimous vote that we supported freedom of speech and the, the entire rest of the Constitution, which makes us all a bunch of hypocrites if you go through with some of this crap that you're proposing tonight. Mike, there's consequences to freedom of speech. It's not just freedom of speech. I mean, really, there's consequences to it. You make that decision, but there's consequences to it. Everybody knows that. It is a consequence of universe. Yeah, somebody's life is a consequence. I mean, people get really upset with some of this social media. It's dangerous. Uh, Chairman. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. This, this this horse has been rode a little bit. Um, I can't say that better myself. Um, would it be out of line? I, I know it's a little uh, uh, unusual, but it would it be out of line if part of their motion, if Mr. Johnson would uh, accept it, that maybe we uh, push this into your report for the full commission and let every, you know, we've got... Uh, a bunch of other commissioners that sit on this that's going to have to approve it. So maybe they'd like to give a little input as to how they feel of what we should be acceptable and not be acceptable instead of trying to leave a committee of eight to, to decide for the entire governing body. And this is what you get on something of this matter. Oh, I can't wait to see 24 debate it. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> the horse ain't going nowhere here. So, <laughs> oh, it definitely won't go nowhere full commission. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if Brad's okay with that, I mean, that's fine. But we have a motion in a second. It's up to him if he wants to accept or if we want to move forward with the motion. Well, you know, I'm 50-50. You know, each commissioner has the right to be on Zoom or to be present in our committee mission. And every chair has always been respectful to recognize that commissioner. Uh, for their input and so forth. But I think it should be uh, discussed in our committee until we take a vote, yay or nay, up or down, to take it to the full full uh, commission because as it sits right now, we have no recommendations for them, but just blatantly take it on the floor. You know, uh, Commissioner Hill, I mean, Chairman Hill may not appreciate that because you can oh, see wow. what it's done among states. And like you said, Chairman Randall, my God, what do you think 24 is going to do? Oh, I'd let's, want to film it. Let's keep it in our house. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, the motion is, uh, Mr. Johnson, it, it is for Brad to or re, I'm sorry, revisit this next uh, meeting next month, right? 
Right, defer it until the next meeting. Okay. Uh, Gwen, will you call the roll, please? Did you add for uh, the county attorney to revise? That's up to Brad. Oh, yeah. yeah that was in leave, there. Yeah, let's don't leave him out for nothing. <laughs> Randall, Brad, please. All right. Yes. Hang on. Yeah, I'd, I'd yes. hate to be left out. I wouldn't want to be left out. But uh, is there some direction you want to get? I mean, I, do you want me to add to this or do you want no. me to come back with a uh, something along the lines of what I talked about? The only controlling uh, official pages on duty kind of thing. Take away and add that. Because what I came to you with originally was like Dr. Eckhoff alluded to, I mean, it's pretty comprehensive. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I couldn't think of anything much to add. Uh, so the, the revisions would be paring it down. Pretty much. What you spoke of earlier, twice now. Okay, I got you. Randall Jenkins? Yes. Daniel McIntyre? Abstain. Tom's Prophet? Yes. Robert Acuff? No. Mike Hill? No. Brad Johnson? Yes. Austin James? Yes, as long as Isaiah is back in his seat. <laughs> Ginger Holdren? Yes. Five yes, one abstain, two no. Passes. All right, moving on. Thank you, guys. Uh, my computers went dead. Uh, let's see here. All right, so live streaming. Uh, I talked to the county attorney about this. I'm pretty sure, didn't I, Josh? Uh, we don't really have to have um, uh, a vote from this committee, but I would like to see the full commission, uh, the committees be live streamed after we go back into person. Uh, in-person meetings. Um, Josh, did we have to, do we need to vote on this or is it up, up to the chairs basically? Yes, yeah, pretty much up to the chair of each uh, committee and then the commission, as long as the, you know, abilities there technology wise and whoever would control it. Uh, but we can't, we can't have any votes, obviously, and we can't have any participation from commissioners other than those yeah. actually present in the room. It would just be uh, a, a non-interactive broadcast on, on whatever, YouTube or something, uh, no public comment, nothing like that. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not a Zoom. I'm not, uh, and this is not referring to Zoom. This is uh, zero uh, activity. It's, it's just a listening device really basically so the public can chime in from anywhere or for that matter, a commissioner can go back and watch the video uh, or the audio, whatever later on. Um, I see no problem in it. Uh, I will get in touch with Travis, uh, Chairman Hill there, and uh, we'll go from there. I just wanted to run it past you. You guys got any comments? Randall? Yes, ma'am. Who would be responsible for streaming the meeting? Well, that would, uh, I, if we could get something set up in, say, your, uh, uh, your meeting room right there, I mean, literally a chair could go in and hit a button or two and start streaming. So hopefully the chairs could be responsible for it. If we have the platform already set up, there might be some legwork from, uh, your office with, you know, say Abby getting us set up on YouTube page or a Facebook page. <laughs> well, well, forget I said the FB word. We'll go back from the, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever we decide, I mean, it would be the chairs. The, we used to do this, uh, years ago. Uh, am I right? Dr. Acuff, didn't we used to stream? under yes. you know, so um, I don't think we did the, the subcommittees, but the full commission for sure. Yes. I mean, and the budget, the budget is 
I mean, that's a, I can't, I cannot get to every budget meeting. I can't even get my agenda in on time, much less make it to four <laughs> extra meetings a month. So, but I can watch a video at 2 p.m. in the morning if I need to. So, uh, Mayor, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the right answer on that. It's something I, I would, I can get together with your, with you and your office and, uh, and the chair and, and maybe come up with a solution. Uh, so well, just to kind of chime in, I know many of you received the email. Um, we are no, Abby is no longer doing any of the commission work that was moved back to Mary's office. Um, part of the statute that evolves around that. Um, Abby's had a lot on her plate. And so that's why I'm asking, I'm trying to take some of that off of her, especially attending any commission meetings or any extra committee meetings. Okay. Um, that's become, you know, I'm trying to be helpful to her right now. Absolutely. Um, so we have taken a lot of those responsibilities out of the mayor's office. Um, and I think with talking with Josh, he has instructed me that the commission and the mayor's office should be two separate entities. Um, just to just to clarify before we try, try to start assigning new job duties back into the office. <laughs> We're trying Absolutely. to clean up some of the job duties that she currently has um, and trying to get her a little bit better line so it can take some of the relief. I'm trying to take some of the relief off of her. That sounds like a plan. Well, um, I, I, th I guess it would be something I need to do a little bit more research into and maybe come back and talk to this committee and talk to the chair too. Yeah, I, okay. I just don't want to obligate Abby to anything else because she has been a tremendous help in this transition from the mayors to different mayors. Um, and I'm currently trying to help her. She's been, I feel a little overwhelmed. Um, and so I don't want to say, yeah, we're going to do that because it ultimately would fall on her. And I, and I don't want to do that. Absolutely. I understand completely. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on. Yes, sir. I, I hate to speak with him not here, and I don't think Mr. Bailey's here, but, you know, obviously he's over tech with the schools, so and, and the schools have not had a problem streaming live, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I abstain, because if we do away with Facebook, that is going to limit, obviously, what we're capable of, of streaming um I'm assuming unless there's another way that I don't know of, which is very well possible. Um, but my point is, is I feel like Mr. Bailey might be an asset. Obviously he, he's on the commission and he can uh, possibly help us with that situation. Absolutely. I will definitely reach out to him uh, and see what we can get going with this. So I don't want to see it go to the wayside. I, I'm definitely in favor of it uh knowledge is key um so and that's for all of us you know if we want to go back and reference a budget committee or this committee or whatever so uh, i'll definitely reach out to him yes sir you know if you recall the uh the roll call pro update actually has the capacity to broadcast yeah. um if we ever get that thing up and going there is the the potential to um uh, allow the media to log in real time as well as the public with all of the bells and whistles of the, uh, of the new roll call pro system. I forgot about our Cadillac in the garage. I forgot about that. We got yeah. we something in the, in the, in the kitty right there. <laughs> drive that car. We are one of these days. Um, uh, thank you, Mike, for that. Uh, all right, so I've, I've got my marching orders there. I'll start looking into some stuff. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, revisiting the holiday list uh, for the county. Uh, our initial uh, list has July. Uh, us doing our uh, Friday before the 4th, which is the 4th is on Sunday. And uh, the actual federal holiday is they've got it on Monday. So I would open up the floor for a motion to change that dropping Friday and adding Monday as actually a, a, a county holiday. Like what Monday was that again? 
It would be the fifth. I had it all pulled up. But I'll make that motion, Randall. That seems like no no brainer there. Um, also, we should probably live stream it on Facebook. <laughs> Couldn't help yourself. <laughs> Looks like I'm going like to have to pay a trip to Fort Mountain. He's getting out of hand. Uh, <laughs> See you at midnight, big boy. <laughs> I just want to know, when is the mayor going to put on our Independence Day show? <laughs> Has she got money in the uh, fire and the budget under fireworks line item? Hey, if you got, I don't know I'll second the uh, um, Commissioner Hill's motion. I you got it. So we have a motion and a second to change the the county holiday from the third, which is a Friday. That's what it is currently to uh, the fifth. So county offices will be closed on that following Monday. So any discussion? Seeing none, Gwen, can you take the roll, please? <clears throat> Randall Jenkins? Yes. Daniel McIntyre? Yes. Thomas Prophet? Yes. Robert Acuff? Yes. Mike Hill? Yes. Brad Johnson? Yes. Yeah. Austin James? Yes. Ginger Holdren? Yes. Just for minute purposes, I did say the Friday the third, it's Friday the second, just FYI. So, all right. Uh, on my agenda, that's pretty much it. I don't have an update on, uh, no new news that I know of for the, uh, uh, census information so and on that note unless there's commissioner comments uh, i'll take a motion Randy, to adjourn Randy, sir Randy uh, yes I sir toward our county attorney for uh, we still have the executive order down by the governor as far as the control of uh public meetings but now i'm going by memory which is dangerous in the financial management, the statement was made was you can have either one or one, you either have an open meeting or you have them Zoom meeting, but not a combination of both. Now, which one is it under executive order? You, you can have uh, participation at, under the executive order. It expires April 28th, as it sits right now. Uh, and it does allow a combination. It allows some people to, to be there in person, some people to be on Zoom uh, and fully participate, commissioners. So, so as it stands right now, uh, you know, if someone tonight, uh, if some of y'all gathered in person, you could do that and open that to the public if that's what you felt like was right. And uh, other commissioners could participate on Zoom. My, my general advice was if it's not safe to meet on Monday, how in the world is it safe to meet on Tuesday? <laughs> and then all the committees should do the same thing, uh, but that, that's kind of not happening. So, but after April 28th, or well, that's at what? So, we, we go back to in person meetings? Is that what you're saying? Live and, in, live and in person after April 28th, right. unless, uh, unless the governor extends it again, which he is known to do about two minutes before it expires. Uh, political pressure. Got to love it. All right. Chairman Jenkins. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is not specific to your committee, but if Isaiah does resign his position next month, I guess I'm going to call out. Brad Johnson, uh, Thomas Prophet, and Daniel McIntyre. One of you all is going to need to be building a grounds chair because everybody else on this committee already chairs another committee. So, well, well, one of you. Other, hey, for the other two, I'm not going to spend myself. They're going to have to be some money brought in here because <laughs> that means you got three valuables here and we're, we're not free and we're not easy. And I'll let Prophet and him speak about themselves. I'll let Brad negotiate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're going to be the main cheese, big boy. Yeah. I'm going to start calling the rules of bylaws a game show. I'm going to be the host. All right. 
So uh, if there's nothing else, I will open the floor for a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, we got a second. Second, ACUF. All right, we got a second. Uh, I guess we stand adjourned. Uh, Randall, I'd like to let you know, I just read here online, there's a, a shortage in restaurant ketchup. So <laughs> tell me about it. Pandemic. So you may want to get on to that. There's a shortage on mayo, ketchup, styrofoam, and anything else that I use in my life that makes me run around Johnson City trying to find product. So you still got Freddy's salsa, right? No, that's the problem, guys. So my, my distributor has run out of Freddy's sauce. That means I have to make it from scratch, which means I have to buy gallons of mayonnaise and ketchup a week. Gallons. I mean, we're talking about I spent $200 in mayo last week in one restaurant. I can bring you in there with a big wooden spoon in the pot of staring now. That's right. So if you go to the store and you can't find any mayo, I've got it at Freddy's. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a good night. Night, everybody. Uh, night. A cup, a cup, shalom. <laughs>